And we are underway. The 102nd season of Boston College football is underway. Sean Terry to return for West Virginia. And he's got it out past the 20. And that's where the Mountaineers will open on offense. Peter Sheehan had the special teams tackle. The quarterback for West Virginia, Brad Lewis. He started only three games last season. He's the man here in town under center for the Mountaineers. And as you look, Corey Ivey, their most responsible receiver. Antonio Brown, the flyer there with the speed. As you look at our best buy starting lineups, look to go to Brown earlier. And there is the offensive line. It's a veteran offensive line, the leader on that group, the right tackle, Tanner Russell out of Princeton, West Virginia. And so the Mountaineers will open up first and 10 from their own 21-yard line. Appears to be a little bit of a clock problem if you saw the seconds ticking by quickly. They wanted to set that exactly. Of course, a 22-yard run took 11 seconds. Wow, going to have to work on that 40 time. <laughs> Single setback is Colburn. And Lewis will give it to him on first and 10. And he picks up about three, just shy of the 25-yard line. Avon Colborn making the first rush. Frank Miserelli making the stop for Boston College. A look at the defense for the Eagles of Boston College. Antonio Garay, the main man in the middle there for BC up front. And the linebackers, Ryan Birch in the middle, who was the starting fullback a season ago. They give Colburn three on the play, and they'll call it second and seven, and we have another stoppage. Well, the reason for the hesitation, Steve, is again a clock problem. The clock should be running right now, and it isn't. It's stuck. Of course, what you're looking at right there is the <laughs> brand new scoreboard that has just been implemented. In fact, uh, they're, they're working on it yesterday. Now you see the arm going. The clock is it's not started. It's going to be great when it works. <laughs> Pumped us some $2 million in and a lot of hype involved in the new scoreboard. Coach Nealon told us uh, yesterday his only concern was that his players might be watching the instant replay on the board instead of being where they should be on the field. Well, that's a look at being a little beleaguered right there. Of course, you start out and you're so excited. Everybody's pumped up, and now something like this takes a little of the juice out of you. You see that tremendous career record, 6'10". Of course, he had nine years at Bowling Green University prior to his 20-year stint here in Morgantown with the West Virginia Mountaineers. Nealon has just about owned Boston College, and you can see Brad Lewis, he's really upset. This is really taking the crowd out of the game. And this is interesting. The reason I say that, Steve, is that Brad Lewis, remember, this is the quarterback that uh, the offensive coordinator Bill Legg pointed out to us. He said, this is a football player. He said, this is, to use the Jim Kelly phrase, this is a linebacker playing quarterback. He's a tough guy. He's very emotional. He's somebody that they say needs to stay on more of an even keel. His favorite NFL player growing up? Todd Christensen. I don't think that was it, Todd. It was, oh, was it? It was Lawrence Taylor. I was oh. backing up your point about the linebacker <laughs> mentality there. Rats. But Todd Christensen was a close second, I believe. Yeah, there you go. We think the clock is working. We'll keep an eye. So it's still second and seven. And we'll go to Coburn to try the left side. Cuts to the outside now. He's across the 30 and very close to a first down. Ralph Parrott, the strong safety, coming up to make the stop. This is one of the reasons why, Steve, running backs now are short. You see his mother certainly excited about that with the initial first down. As he cuts to his left, he's in a situation to where most guys just have to lean in that direction, fall down, and get tackled for a two-yard game. He shows the cutting ability of his predecessor, that being number 20, Amos Zeraway. Now with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Coburn has the two carries for the 10 yards so far. And let's see if we can actually have consecutive plays without a clock problem. Out of the eye on first and 10 now from the 31-yard line. Here's Lewis off the play action. Brad Lewis will put it up for the first time this season. And he's got a man. Right. And he's got it. It's Corey Ivey down to the five-yard line. Right on the money to Ivey. 64 yards on the game. Steve, that was a great throw. And you had mentioned that they thought they were going to go to Anthony, Antonio Brown, their speedster. But instead, they take advantage in the secondary with him stride for stride as DJ Stutton. But he gets out about a yard, gets the separation. Steve, you're absolutely right. That throw couldn't have been better. Right on the money. You can see the reaction of Lewis. He is excited. 
first throw of the season goes for 64 yards. He's hoping that that's a portal of good things to come. And it's now the 29 consecutive games for Ivy with a reception. That's the fifth longest active streak in the country. On first and goal now from the five-yard line. Single setback is Coburn. And they'll give it to him. He's got some space for a moment, and then he is gang-tackled it before. Keith Levitt, the first Boston College Eagle to make the hit. One of the things that Coburn has to learn as a youngster is that there are some times where you just have to lower your shoulder and go. I think that he reminds me a little bit of Barry Sanders in that way. You know, Barry Sanders makes all the terrific runs, but he also has a lot of tackles for loss and tackles at the line of scrimmage. There's sometimes the youngster has to realize, listen, sometimes it's not there. Just get the one or two yards. Second and goal at the four. Bill Legg, the offensive coordinator on his checklist of things, score a touchdown every time they're first and goal. We'll see. Here's a pitch left to Coburn. And he is brought down just shy of the goal line. And that'll bring up a third and goal situation. Ramon Johnson, the free safety, making the stop for BC. Steve, I'm guessing in this situation with this offensive line, four returning starters from last year, this is definitely four down territory unless they fumble the ball. I think they're going to go for it here, obviously here on third down, but if they don't get it, I'm thinking they've got to give it a shot. Get this crowd involved. There you see Bill Legg, the offensive coordinator of West Virginia, pushing all the right buttons up to this point. And keep in mind, this is his first series as offensive coordinator as well. Here's a pass, and it's just out of the reach of Sean Burton, the tight end. Lewis a bit too high and strong on the throw. And what are you going to do on fourth and goal from the one? I, you know what? I, be, I can't believe it. Seriously, I'm very, very surprised. You saw the ball between the goal line and the one. You've got the 300-pounders up front. This is very surprising to me. I stand corrected, but I, I don't understand this. You're inside the one. you got to give it a shot. If you don't get it, make him go 99 yards. John Ollinger on to attempt the field goal. And the chip shot is up, and it is good from 17 yards away. In the opener, West Virginia opens the scoring. They lead 3-0. Welcome back. West Virginia is on the board. But Todd, it's only three instead of seven. You made an interesting point, Steve, at the break, saying that after coming off a four and seven season, maybe they're not as cocky as they could be. But I'm thinking to myself, you got four returning offensive linemen, starters. You're inside the one yard line. You get arguably the best back in the Big East behind you. I'm very surprised they didn't take two shots at it. Todd James, the true freshman kicker, has kicked it off. Willie Green on the return for Boston College. And we'll get our first look. At the Eagles offense, Anthony Nolan made the special teams stop. Tim Hasselbeck, they say he's pain-free. He played all every game but one last season, but with pain. Had abdominal groin surgery, missed all the spring, but now he's pain-free. And a look at the guys he'll hand it off to and throw it to. Dedrick DeWalt, the go-to guy. And there's an also a veteran offensive line led by Paul Zukowskis. Inside. First and ten for Boston College. From the trailing early by a score of 3-0. Ryan Utzler, the fullback. Cedric Washington, the tailback. But Hasselbeck to throw. And it's complete to Jamal Burke, the wide receiver. And he should have a first down. The defense for West Virginia. David Upchurch is the main man in the middle. He's bulked up a lot. I think they'd like to see him add some more weight. Even more weight to what he already has. Now look at the linebackers here. Grant Wiley is a freshman. They expect some big things out of Kyle Caden, one of the leaders, and Chris Edmonds, the big play guy. And this is that inexperienced secondary. Rick Sherrod has the most experience. That's only 10 college football games under his belt. We'll watch for Hasselbeck to try to take advantage of that inexperienced West Virginia secondary. Hasselbeck, second play, is going to throw again on first and ten. And again, it's Burke cutting across the middle. And he comes up just shy of another first down. Very, very surprising with regards to Boston College. You would have thought they'd pound it early on. But clearly, Steve, you made a very coaching point regarding the inexperience of West Virginia secondary. Look at the gap that he's giving Burke. That's a good 11 yards at the line of scrimmage. So you know what? We got a first down running the route on the other side. Let's give it another shot. And sure enough, completed two for two for Hasselbeck. Nice start. And a second and one. Name an offensive coordinator who doesn't like that call. They'll put it on the ground to try to pick up the first down. Cedric Washington, his first carry. For West Virginia, they have seven defensive players making their first start. 
So of the four starters that return with experience, two have changed position. That sounds like a defense in disarray. I don't think that Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator of Boston College, isn't cognizant of that. He comes right out and throws the ball to everybody's surprise because they're saying to themselves, look, they've got, they've got three studs up front, two of them that are probably going to be pros. Why don't they run right off the bat? Instead, they throw. They've got West Virginia off balance. These are college kids. Makes sense. They'd be nervous playing here at Hall. And that pass was nearly intercepted. Jamal Burke was the intended receiver. Sean Hackett and Richard Bryant came over. The corner and the safety to make the hit and force the incompletion. You know what they say, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on... What about the third time? All right, we're getting it right the third time. Gaining some valuable experience exactly. here on the first series. Did not give him the same gap. Able to come over and break up the play was Bryant, forcing a second and long. Second and ten. Two receivers split out to the left, single setback. And here's Hasselbeck to throw. Across the middle. That one is intercepted. It's picked off of the 45 by Brian King, the red shirt freshman. And that will give a secondary some experience and some confidence right there. What they're trying to do is they're trying to isolate their tight end Guazzo on Edmonds. They get what they want, but the throw is underneath. Take a look right here. Coming underneath, the ball is thrown short, and Edmonds makes a great play, cuts up field. He cuts off the wrong foot right there. Otherwise, he would have had a lot of yardage. Edmonds, of course, is known as a rush backer. He's the guy that they have designed just to get sacks, but instead he shows his coverage skills and shows some pretty good hands. A big turnover for the Mountaineers. Beg your pardon, it was Chris Edmonds, the senior out of Pittsburgh, who made that interception. And again, all the momentum now with West Virginia on the board looking for more. This time they give it to the fullback, Wes Hours. He's quite a story. We'll tell you about that in a bit. Toledo, we understand, is on the board. Get the update from Brian Kenny. Yes, Steve, indeed. We've got Penn State off the humbling loss to USC, and here come the Rockets. Great blocking up front. Chester Taylor pulls a guy in with him. 13-yard touchdown. Rockets leading Penn State 7-0 in the first. Steve? All right, Brian, thanks. Keep us posted. Updates throughout. Not the most auspicious beginning for the Nittany Lions, is it, Steve? A lot of big teams are struggling early on in the season. On second down and eight now, they give us to Colburn, and you hear the reaction from the crowd as he has bounced back. Ryan Birch is the man who makes that stick. Ryan Birch was on the defensive line last year and also played some fullback, but they needed some help after Frank Chamberlain, their star middle linebacker, graduated. So they asked Birch to go to the middle, and if that play is any indication, he's going to do a nice job. That's a good stick. Clinic. Face the numbers. You got anything else? No, no. I, just, <laughs> I was waiting Hey, for I'm it. trying to help you, man. It's a whole, you know, put to get you into that football put nomenclature. A, put a hat on him. There you go. Beautiful. Third down and seven now. Just shy of midfield. Out of the shotgun. Here's Brad Lewis. All sorts of time. Looked right to the dump off and checked off and instead connects with Phil Braxton, his wide receiver out of Vanderbilt, Pennsylvania. Off a lot of time to throw. And, of course, that's a name that's familiar to West Virginia fans. He is the nephew of the former great running back and now deceased James Jim Braxton, who, of course, those of you who follow pro football remember Jim Braxton was the fullback for O.J. Simpson the year he rushed for 2,000 yards along with the electric company. But Boston College gave Lewis far too much time to throw. That was a pickup of 15 yards. Lewis to Braxton on first and 10 now, the 36. They send the wide receiver Antonio Brown in motion off the play action. Lewis tried to dump on it and nearly intercepted and should have been intercepted. It was in the hands of the defensive back for Boston College. Curtis Bolden is the one who, who dropped the interception. Here's the situation. Lewis is about to get sacked, and instead he decides to get rid of it instead of taking the sack. This is a big, strong guy, 220 pounds. Shows the arm strength right here. A little bit of a happy feet, gets rid of it, throws right between the two and the six, but Bolden just cannot hold on to it. In fact, look at, you know, he comes across, and I think he's anticipating making a hit. Instead, the ball's right in his chest, and he can't hang on. Break for West Virginia. Bolden seeing some action. Marco Williams and Jerome Ledbetter, two linebackers, both injured in practice. And Antonio Brown has it, and he's out of bounds, just shy of the 20-yard line. A flag on the play. Seeing a lot of that recently. Florida, of course, made that famous with their wide receivers going in motion, getting the quick handoff. 
Referee today is John Smith. The umpire, Bruce Palmer. And the linesman, Matthew Fitzgerald, and we'll get the call. Holding the indication. That's one way of stop stopping a drive. We mentioned the defense in the front seven for Boston College and their struggles. Marco Williams and Jerome Ledbetter both play the same position. They both went down with knee injuries this week in practice. And so we'll see a lot of Curtis Bolden, who nearly had that interception, and Josh Ott as well, a redshirt freshman. See, that ends up being nearly a 30-yard swing. There's a gain of 14 on the play, and now with the penalty. Coach Tom O'Brien has to be happy about that. Everything going West Virginia's way early, and of course now, after they just missed the interception, they get a huge, huge turnover. Or a huge penalty, rather. I think it was a personal foul, Steve. I don't think it was a hold. It might have been. Was it could have been both with two penalties? Oh, so they there? took. So they took the personal foul. Yeah. Obviously, took the extra yardage. The ball just over the 45. Brings up a second down and 29. Bill Legg was telling us that when he has second and three or third and two, everybody's got an idea of what to do. He said second and 28, suddenly he's an orphan. <laughs> Single setback, and here's Lewis to throw. He's got immediate pressure. They tried to set up the screen to Avon Coburn, and Lewis might have rushed it a bit. Steve Martin had the pressure. You're not going to hit me with the Steve Martin line there, are you? No, no, there's Bill Legg right there, the offensive coordinator. Very animated young man and, and very excited. This is his first year as the offensive coordinator for West Virginia, and he was very excited about the tools that he had to work with. Veteran wide receivers and, of course, having Coburn back there. And he really believes in his quarterback, Lewis. In fact, he told us, I asked him, I said, he reminds me a little bit of Hostetl in terms of his toughness, and he said, this kid might be tougher. Wow. See some toughness here on third and 28. Might have to absorb a hit. Said they play it safe. The draw to Colburn. Give them a couple of yards out to the 41-yard line, and they'll look to punt it away for the first time this afternoon. As we approach eight minutes left, here are the first. West Virginia had a first and goal situation and had to settle for a field goal, and that's the 3-0 that you see. And that, that penalty was absolutely huge. They had all the momentum going their way. Boston College able now to stuff them here. They'll have decent field position coming back, and they can reestablish themselves on offense. Mark Fazilari, one of the premier punters in the Big East, will kick it away. Dedrick Gallup fumbled the football, and West Virginia says they have it. They do at the 15-yard line. A critical mistake by DeWalt of Boston College. It appeared that the wide receiver, Carlos Osegueda, was the one that came up with the fumble. But right here, DeWalt has to be aware of how close people are. He never had it. He just absolutely never had it. And there's Osegueda right on top of the ball. Another turnover, and Tom O'Brien just can't be very happy about it. Just catch the ball is all he's asking. Second turnover already for Boston College after the 40-yard punt. And the West Virginia offense struts right back onto the field. Brad Lewis under center. Two tight ends out to the left. They'll give it to Coburn. Down the left side, cuts the corner, and he's knocked out of bounds after a pickup of maybe one on the play, and there is a flag as well. Ralph Parrott forced him out. This two might come back as a hold. It will. Virginia Tech finally in action. Here's Brian Kenny back in the studio. Brian. Yes, indeed, Steve. Virginia Tech only beat Akron by a field goal back in 96. This time, Michael Vick, after converting a third and 20 in the air, will, guess what, take off and run with this one, Vick, easily again, lightning out against Georgia Tech. 7-0 leading Akron right now, Steve. All right, Brian, thanks very much. On September 30th, Boston College will get a good look at Michael Vick and Virginia Tech. You know, you talked a little bit earlier, Steve, about Wes Hours, their 290-pound fullback. Watch your, watch your number 40 on the block. Once the man goes down and you can see his hands on top, that's what the official sees, and that's when the flag comes out. If he has his hands and he pulls them up, it's okay, but instead his hands around the shoulder, and that's the official call. Penalty leads to first and 21. There's another flag on the play. Whistle right after the snap. 
to be a motion penalty with 7.28 left here in the first. We expect a lot of penalties. False start against the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Steve, we talked a little bit about Wes Hours, the fullback, arguably the biggest fullback that I know of since Refrigerator Perry. He was an offensive guard. He was a defensive tackle. But the one thing he is is a coach's dream. Coach Don Nalen mentioned the fact that this young man is willing to play any place at any time and doesn't care if he gets the football. Terrific blocker. Out of the eye now on first and 26 after consecutive penalties. Lewis to throw. He's got some time now. He does, and he spun around and takes him down by Scott Bradley for the sack. Wes Hours, who uh, tried to make the block there, some contact there. But see, his position, offensive lineman, has changed. His uniform number, 46, has changed. And see his weight, 290? That has changed also. He's wearing uniform number 40. He's now a fullback. And as for his weight, we followed him into the weight room. We're not going to believe any media guide. And we're all the way up to 296.6 pounds for a fullback, Wes Hours. I think the phrase for that is a load. Second and 32. Has great hands for a big man, they say, as well. Avon Coburn on the carry before Sean Guthrie wrapped him up. Well, Steve, you called it well when you said that these first games are, seem to have a myriad of penalties, and certainly West Virginia has plagued itself with them. Here, having to get to the five-yard line for the first down, I'm thinking that they should go out of the shotgun, run the hook routes, get another 10 yards, and put themselves in field goal position. Right now, you're looking at a 50-yarder, and I think that's a little bit out of the range for the West Virginia place kicker. Out of the shotgun now. On third and 29, as you would expect. And there's the throw. And it was blocked at the line of scrimmage and knocked down to the turf. Ramon Johnson appeared to block it at the line of scrimmage. So West Virginia hurting themselves mistakes by penalties. Boston College has hurt themselves. Already two turnovers in the first nine minutes of the opener. And they will punt it away. Mark Fazerlari, once again, will give it a try. And Dedrick DeWalt will try it as well. DeWalt, the last chance he had to receive a punt, he fumbled it away. He's standing at the 10-yard line, looking to receive the punt. Steve, we need to give a lot of credit here to the BC defense. Remember, the front four is brand new. Brand new, the front four. For Boston College. They lost Chris Hovan, their Ball. superstar, and of course their Delayed linebacker. Game. Offense. Five Frank Chamberlain. Remains. And the result Four is pounds. that they played very well here to stifle them after you know getting down to the 20-yard line with the penalty. And then of course the fumbled punt instead of giving up a field goal, which I'm sure they would have conceded. Now they forced them to punt. Of course, that was intentional to take the five yards, and Boston College could have opted to refuse the penalty, but instead they stick him back at the 38. Ever tell you my Sean Landetta theory on this play? No, I'd thing? like to hear that. Though. All right. DeWalt standing at the 10. He said it's easier when it's closer. Bad snap. Fazolari had to take it off the turf, able to get it away. And it's down at the nine-yard line. And so Boston College will get another chance. They trail by three here in the first. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Pep Boys. Cars like us, people love us. And by Universal Pictures, The Watcher. Start September 8th at theaters everywhere. Steve Levy, Todd Christensen, Dave Ryan, thanks for allowing us to be a part of your holiday weekend. Here, the Big East opener. West Virginia has opened the scoring with a 3 0 lead. And Boston College starting now from their own nine yard line. And they give it to Cedric Washington. He's out ahead of the pile, and he's just shy of a first down. Rick Sherrard cut him up, cut him off, and knocked him down. Let's go downstairs to Dave Ryan. Dave. All right, Steve, thanks. Antonio Garay is a key player in the BC defensive scheme after Chris Hoban is long gone off to the NFL and the Minnesota Vikings. He's got a twisted left knee, does Garay. They're going to reevaluate her halftime. Doesn't look too good for him now. By the way, got Donald, the defensive coordinator, very proud in his words of his team after stopping West Virginia after the fumble punt. BC trying to stay out of those third and long situations. It's not a football that's loose. It's a helmet loose on the field. As Washington was stopped by David Carter, 
And there it is. In the last two series, BC is at a fourth and 28 and a fourth and 34. Goes to show that they're working hard, as is Kyle Caden, who, figuratively speaking, lost his head on that last play. He's the middle linebacker, number 45. Very, very smart young man. Defensive coordinator Steve Dunlop feels that he's like a coach on the field. One of only three juniors in the history of West Virginia to be named captain. And that certainly is significant. On third and two, here's Hasselbeck going to throw. Screen out to the right for the first down of the fullback Ryan Utzler. And he picks up the necessary yardage, give him four on the first down. Got a good block from the running back Cedric Washington on Grant Wiley. Usually he's the other way around. This time it's the tailback blocking for the fullback. Take a look at his number, 248. Have you ever noticed that? O.J. Anderson once said he had a theory on numbers, and they designated speed and position. He said fullbacks now, a lot of the blocking fullbacks are either the high 30s or mid to high 40s. I still want to. I still want to get back to the uh, Sean Landetta story. Oh, we find again. I'll bring it up. Right. Coming up on four minutes to play here in the first. Hasselbeck faked it to the first guy and gave it to the second guy, and that guy is Cedric Washington, the workhorse for Boston College. Grant Wiley made the stop. They were concerned about Wiley. They didn't know how much he would, you know, with a lack of experience, the redshirt freshman, concerned how he would respond. A home game, pressure, Big East made a couple of tackles early on in the football game. Well, remember, he's replacing arguably the biggest star on defense for West Virginia last year, that being Barrett Green, 130 tackle guy who's now in the pros with the Detroit Lions. So they're asking a lot of Wiley. Second down and eight now for BC. They trail 3-0 on an early field goal. Hasselbeck feeling the pressure, tried to escape it, could not. And there's Kyle Caden bringing him down. That's, that's a great play on the part of Caden because now, as you pointed out, Hasselbeck, with his injury behind him, is much more mobile and much quicker. Caden able to drop him because there was a lot of green in the secondary. He certainly would have had the first down if he hadn't got past Caden. Brings up a third down and seven. The ball spotted at the 23-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Hasselbeck calling signals. Wide receivers split out to the right and left. Hasselbeck is creamed on the blitz. Everybody came, and David Carter got to him first, dropping him at the 12-yard line. David Carter comes from the blind side, and there are just too many people to block. Whatever the blocking scheme that Boston College had set up, it did not account for Carter. Hasselbeck did not see him. Watch from the bottom of your screen. Here comes number seven, just completely unblocked. The fullback in that case comes out at the last minute, but it's just too late. David Carter didn't play organized sports until his junior year in high school. Makes a pretty good play there. Antonio Brown calls for the fair catch. And West Virginia will take over at the 43-yard line. Leading 3-0 when we come back to Morgantown. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Acura. Introducing the all-new Acura CL Sports Coupe and by Adidas. Back in Morgantown, last time BC and West Virginia played in a season opener here in Morgantown was 1971. West Virginia won 45-14 behind Pete Wood, rushing for a then record 214 yards for West Virginia. Even Coburn would take that, and Coburn pounds it out to the just shy of the 50-yard line. Let's check out what Nebraska's doing this early afternoon. Here's Brian Kenny. Steve, number one Nebraska with 10 back on offense this year. One of them, Eric Crouch, first Nebraska driving. There he goes. San Jose State, though, is marching. They're on the Nebraska six. We'll keep you up to date, Steve. All right, Brian, thank you. Final two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Steve, you and I saw Nebraska at the end of the year down there in the Fiesta Bowl, and they really looked like a juggernaut after they spanked Tennessee. I'm not surprised they're number one starting the season. Here's Lewis to throw, and he's looking up top, and he's got a man. It's Antonio Brown on the catch. What a grab by Brown. Tough to get better coverage than that of Trevor White. He was with him step for step, but Brown went up and got it. Well, you wouldn't think in the terms of Antonio Brown, who's about 5'9", 5'10", that he would have the vertical to do this, but you see it all the time. As you pointed out, White is right with him. He just runs it up. White's with him stride for stride. Now, at this point, White needs to adjust and not step back. 
Instead, Brown is the one that takes it at its highest point. White is too late in his jump. That's a great athletic play by Antonio Brown. And once again, a deep ball that has success for Lewis. 47 yards on the play. Two receivers out to the left. They line up in the eye behind Lewis. And they'll pitch it to Coburn. Took a step backwards and up to settle for the loss. And there is a flag on the play. Willie Poole made the stop. And that was costly. Offsides against the defense. The penalty is half the distance from the goal. It remains first down. So another first and goal situation for West Virginia. There's more great college football for you tonight on ESPN2. It's Colorado, Colorado State. That'll be a great matchup at 6 Eastern. Here on ESPN, a couple of ranked teams will go head-to-head. -head. Southern Miss and Tennessee. And then the nightcap, Arizona and Utah at 9 Eastern. And a touchdown for Coburn. He's in from the two-yard line. And West Virginia will open up their lead. Brad Nell and Tanner Russell do an outstanding job creating a gap for Coburn. And once again, I'm really impressed with Coburn's feet, his ability to stop and start and find the gaps. A good little back. John Ollinger on to attempt the extra point. The senior up. And connects. 10-0 now in favor of West Virginia. Running the football effectively. And passing the football effectively. The last time these two got together last season, A lot of bad blood in the West Virginia Boston College game. West Virginia, great start, and then plays like this happen. Pedro Serino, the safety, picks it up and goes 60 some yards for a touchdown. Here's Hasselbeck with a deep ball to DeWalt that goes the distance. That Corey Ivey fumble really turned the thing around for Boston College. They defeated West Virginia by 17 points. I think this is a real game of payback. We mentioned the word revenge a number of times where West Virginia's concerned. They kept playing it off, but I don't believe it, Steve. They're fired up coming into this one. We had lunch yesterday with some of the West Virginia captains. It's sort of a tradition here. We're talking with Tanner Russell. That first touchdown that you saw by West Virginia against BC last year, that was on their very first drive. He said that might have been their best drive of the entire season. I mean, that's how good things started for them at Chestnut Hill, and then it all went down from there. Todd James is set to kick it off the true freshman and it's Dewan Daniels at the 10 cuts to the 20 has a seam he's out past the 30 maybe a fumble there's definitely a flag on the play but by the way the crowd reacted and the West Virginia sideline is pointing that they have the football indeed the officials say otherwise and Boston College will hang on to it 41 seconds to play here in the first Well, it's definitely a hole that's going to move them back. Nothing's going right for BC at this point. First quarter has been a lot of mistakes for O'Brien's crew. A couple of turnovers, now some penalties. During the return, illegal block in the back and above the waist. Return team, 10 yards, and spotted a foul. First down. Todd, it's certainly understandable to see two teams in an opener out of sync. Well, it looks like BC's more out of sync. Certainly are, but they've got three more quarters to rectify, and they've got the players to do it, too. West Virginia, the 10-0 lead. We've got 41 seconds on our scoreboard. However, the new $2 million scoreboard has zero seconds here. Willie Green checks in to the backfield for Boston College, but Hasselbeck will throw, and it's complete to Mike Guazzo, the tight end. 
They like number 80. They think that he's going to be a player, a, a former wide receiver. He brings a lot of speed and quickness to the position that some of the other tight ends in the past don't. He's a bigger version of Pete Mitchell is what I had heard. He shows nice hands there, catching the ball between the hashes. The coaching staff told us he has unique speed for his size. Former full-time wide receiver. Making it as a tight end now. On second and short. Final play of the first quarter. Willie Green gets a chance, spelling Cedric Washington. Here are the final minutes of the first quarter. Rick Sherrard made the stop. It is a first down. He got enough for the first, and that is the official end of the first quarter of the first game of the season for these two squads. And West Virginia leads 10 to nothing. Great quote by Don Nealon heading into this season, his 21st at West Virginia. We're supposed to be lousy, so let's find out if we are. And here they have a 10 0 lead as we hit second quarter action. In the preseason Big East poll, West Virginia was picked sixth, Boston College fourth, behind Miami, Virginia Tech, and Syracuse. Pitt was fifth, Temple and Rutgers rounded out. Loose football, and let's see. Willie Green carried it. And it's a turnover again third turnover of the game already for Boston College and West Virginia will take over in great field position it's a bad decision on the part of Hasselbeck the halfback wasn't ready he got tripped up and the flag I believe is going to be a personal foul watch the left of your screen starts in Edmonds does a great job of forcing a little bit early and Green wasn't waiting for it it ricochets off his left shoulder and of course there's nothing but blue shirts there I think it may have been Edmonds that came up with the ball. There's Edmonds. He cuts inside the tackle, forces it quickly. That's a bad pitch. It's a little behind Green. Dead Ricochets ball. off the shoulder back. Personal foul against the fumbling team. The penalty is the size. Willie Green was upset Edmonds about it at the end of the play. He shoved one of the players, First and the officials saw it. And now half the distance to the goal line. Once again, what great field position for West Virginia. They'll operate first and goal. Steve, up to this point, West Virginia has been down to the 1, the 36, the 14, and then, of course, in that last series, they had a touchdown. Now they're down to the 6. They're definitely winning the battle of field position. Bill Legg is loving this, the offensive coordinator, in his first quarter. Cooper Rigo on that carry. Inched him closer. We get closer to Brian Kenny. Hey, Steve. You know, Akron is a top contender in the MAC, 7-4 and four last year, but this is Michael Vick. And you have to wonder... Can he be anywhere near as spectacular as he was last year? There you go. Vic back the other way. 63 yards. Kept it himself. 14-3 in the second quarter, Steve. Uh, pretty electric player, but you already knew that. Second and goal from the three. They hand it off again. Again, it's Rigo. And again, he is short of the goal line. Let's go on the field. Here's Dave Ryan. Dave. Tim Hasselbeck will not be the quarterback for BC on this next series for the Eagles. Brian St. Pierre has a coach's plan for every series to begin the second quarter. He will get at least one series. If he does well, he'll stay in. Coach Tom O'Brien wants to make sure later in the season that Tim Hasselbeck gets hurt, that Brian St. Pierre is ready to go in an emergency situation. We'll see him next up for BC. All right, Dave, what will the score be, though, by the time he gets his hands on the football? As they look to sneak it with Brad Lewis, and he did not get in on third and goal. Gee, Steve, what do you think they're going to do? <laughs> Originally, we would have thought they would have gone for it here. The crowd urging them to go for it, but in a similar situation on the first series, they elected to kick the chip shot field goal, and Ollinger connected from 18 yards away. A lot of the linemen are pointing in that direction. There hasn't been anybody come on the field that represents the kicking team, so it appears that they are. To score change that with a 10 nothing lead, does that make the there more of a game, take the gamble here with an up 10? Well, I, I certainly you feel a little bit more comfortable when you're up 10, but I think that this is a situation where, if for whatever reason, Boston College is able to hold them here. That would be tremendous for them. You see Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator for Boston College, he has had his work cut out for him here in the first quarter because his team has been on the field, it seems like, almost the entire time. Here we go, fourth and goal. Two tight ends, and they're going to hand it off, and it's Rigo, and he's in for the touchdown. Cooper Rigo, 
the junior out of New City, New York, scores the touchdown, and West Virginia now leads 16 to nothing. Points off turnovers there for West Virginia. Steve, I can't help but think that it's not coincidental that on both touchdown runs, they went to the right side of the offensive line. And of course, in that case, that's Rick Gillum, Brad Nell, and Tanner Russell doing an outstanding job. You mentioned Tanner Russell earlier. Now when you're on to connect for the extra point. And this has to be considered somewhat of a surprise early on. We're early in the second quarter, and West Virginia is putting it to Boston College. 17-0 Mountaineers. West Virginia enjoying a 17-0 lead here in front of the home folks. Playing at home so important for the Mountaineers. They have seven home games on their schedule. And keep in mind, last year, the only four wins they had came right here. Lost every single road game. Todd James will put it in the air. Willie Green and Dewan Daniels are back deep for Boston College. DC would like to get something going. He could start with some decent field position. Green in the end zone thought about it and now thinks better of it and takes an E and they'll start first and 10 from the 20. Well, the theme of this game certainly has been the turnovers up to this point. First is the great interception by Edmonds on a ball that was underthrown by Hassel, but DeWalt fumbles the punt. And then I don't know, it may have been the separation. They didn't have quite enough, or maybe it was just a bad pitch on the part of Hasselbeck. But all of those have led to West Virginia points. And Steve, certainly a contributing factor, too, has been the average starting field position. Wow. Boston College has oh. had, you know, it's just been awful for them, whereas West Virginia's had every opportunity. In fact, it's conceivable here that West Virginia probably could have about 28 points. Funny you pick 28. That's the exact total of Boston College yards so far. See if Bryant St. Pierre can turn some of that around. Is this his series? Will well, we get a couple of series to work with here as he hands off to the left side to Cedric Washington? Not much there. Well, certainly in the case of St. Pierre, you're saying to yourself, couldn't I have come in with the score even or close? A lot of pressure on him now down 17. But I like the idea that Tom O'Brien has because so many times when the first guy gets all the repetitions, if a guy gets into a game situation, I don't care how much film he's watched, that's not like playing the game. Washington so far, remember a standout rusher, second in the Big East a season ago, just five carries for 11 yards so far. Out of the shotgun, here's St. Pierre looking to throw for the first time. He throws complete to Washington. He's knocked out of bounds by Brian King short of the first down. In talking to the BC coaches about the philosophy in bringing in St. Pierre, really no matter what, Hasselbeck could be playing the greatest game of his life, and St. Pierre will uh, see a series. They're so committed to that, they admitted that last year there was a point it actually might have hurt them in a game. They didn't lose a game because of it, but it might have broken up the rhythm of Hasselbeck in the offense. But that's something they believe in strongly, and they will stick with no matter what. On third down and two. That's a shifting on the offensive line. Two receivers out to the right of Brian St. Pierre. Straight drop. Now feels the pressure and can't get away from it. He's dropped to the 17-yard line by William Perry. Well, that's an aptly named defensive lineman, isn't it? William Perry, number 94, is able to just penetrate St. Pierre. Take a look at the loop move. Lineman falls down, and Perry is able to snag St. Pierre. Good line stunt there for West Virginia. And clearly the energy is on the side of the Mountaineers, Steve. Kevin McMyler, it's his first punt of the afternoon. It's a fair catch called for by Antonio Brown, and the crowd groans. He had plenty of room to run if he wanted to. ESPN Classic presents This Day in History. Chris Perman hosts Remembering Lombardi. The 30th anniversary of the death of the legendary coach Sports Century style, and you can see it Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. To order ESPN Classic, dial 1 800 Classic or call your cable provider. Terrific book that I just read just a little while ago, Steve, is a book called When Pride Really Matters. It's a different kind of biography on the life of Vince Lombardi. Gentlemen went into great detail. Just a terrific book on arguably the greatest coach in the history of pro football. As you look at the total yards, 
with a 17-0 lead. Here's Avon Coburn carrying it out and grinding down that clock, which appears to be working now. Doug Bassett made the stop, the strong safety. Once again, the great feat of Coburn. Some guys are meant for AstroTurf. Take a look at Coburn, low center of gravity. There's the cut. Now you think he's going to the outside. Nope, he cuts back once again. Able to make a lot out of nothing. Mom says, that's right. That's right. I taught him that. That's right. <laughs> I worked on him. We're in the backyard. I said, cut right, cut left. Yeah, it's my boy. Making her proud every single day. Must be a terrific kid, not just a terrific kid. Here's Lewis sprinting out to his right, and the throw got a man wide open. And threw it a bit behind him. Antonio Brown made the catch, and if he could have kept his feet, it might have been six. Willie Poole had to make a decision, Steve. And the decision he had to make was once the quarterback rolls out and looks like he's going to run, he needs to step up or stay with his man. He didn't stay with his man. He stepped up, able to make the play, but it's going to come back because of the penalty. The 25-yard gain be taken away. Ineligible downfield offense, five yards from the previous spot. He remains second down. See, this is really tough on an offensive lineman. Here you have the quarterback roll out, and for all intents and purposes, it looks like he's going to run. So as the lineman, you go, all right, I'm helping. I take off downfield three yards. All of a sudden, he pulls up and throws, and oh, I'm stuck. So in the film room, they say, come on, I thought he was going to run. I was doing a good thing. Instead, it turns out to be a penalty. Back it up and make it second and 11. According to Bill Legg, that would be a loss of 30, minus 30 yards. We'll get into that in just a bit. Here's Lewis to throw now. As a man again, huge cushion by the BC secondary. It's Brown again, and he only needs a couple of steps to make the play. Pick up a 14 there to Antonio Brown. Jonathan Ordway, the best cover guy in that BC secondary, making the stop. Antonio Brown is the fastest man according to 40 times. Now this is an interesting matchup. You've got Antonio Brown, who was second in the indoor 60 meters in the Big East. You know who was third? Ordway. And you know who won it? No. Santana Moss of Miami. Wow. So you got a bunch of football players running the sprints, but this young man timed it 4-1-8. Unbelievable. Draw play to Coburn. And it's snuffed out as he stopped at midfield. Interesting statistic, though, if you notice, coming back to Brown for just a little bit, you saw that he had 50 catches, but he had less than 10 yards per catch. Offensive coordinator Bill Legg said that we have to get him downfield, and we have to get the vertical game going. And I think that they've been able to establish that today, Steve, with two plays in particular. Brown had a big game against BC in 98. Three catches for 75 yards. Didn't get to see the Eagles last season. A hip pointer kept them out of the matchup. Brings up a second down and eight now. Under 10 minutes to play here in the first half. Lewis quick drop and the throw. That time going for Corey Ivey who tried to go up and he goes 6-3 and couldn't pull it down. Willie Poole was right on him. Coburn, of course, is Avon Coburn. Everybody's aware of his skills as a tailback, but can he block? Watch number 22 stick his nose right in the middle. Of, of course, he gets spiked for it. But I can tell you as an offensive player, you don't mind that as long as your guy doesn't make the play. And it shows a lot of courage on the part of the 5-foot, 9-inch, 195-pounder who's not simply a one-dimensional runner. That's the, the playing without the football that Don Nealon talked about on third down and eight. Blitz from the outside. They get up the screen perfectly to Colburn. But he doesn't have enough for the first down. Might have been a late hit there, too. There was some piling on. Paul Cook made the stop. And late hits, these two are familiar with that. In last year's matchup, West Virginia was really upset with Boston College. They said three or four late hits on their quarterback. Brad Lewis actually had to leave the game with a concussion. Yeah, but the coaching staff stressed that success is the best revenge. And up to this point, certainly, everything is going the way of the blue and gold. We did some trash talking in the papers this week, talking about a revenge game. Mark Fazolari puts it in the air, and it'll go into the end zone for a touchback, a 47-yard punt. In his 21st season as head coach, Don Nealon's got a 17-0 lead. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Dodge. In a perfect world, everything would be different. And by BF Goodrich Tires. Take control. 
Welcome back. 29th meeting all time between these two. Only became Big East rivals in 91 when the conference started. Tenth time they meet as Big East rivals. And Boston College will take over. They've had 16 plays from scrimmage and net of 26 yards. They look for more here. And the throw, and it's batted away. Tim Hasselbeck back in the game. J.P. Camella was the intended receiver. Had him open too, Steve. Needed to get a little air under it. It was underneath. Camella comes out, Cam Camella comes out of the backfield on an out and up. You're going to see the fullback come here and go. And he's got him. The linebacker's a trail, but the ball is short. He needs to throw that a little bit farther, and he's got a big completion. Second down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Single setback is Willie Green. And he's the man carrying the football out past the 25. Michigan in action. For more on the Big Ten. Here's Brian Kenny. Thank you, Steve. Michigan and Bowling Green and Drew Henson, of course, out injured. Would have been the starting quarterback. John Navarre, red shirt freshman, is in. First action as a collegiate passer. Three touchdown passes that to Bellamy. 21-0 right now. How's that for pressure? Red, red shirt freshman in the first couple snaps in the big house. Looks like it's really bothering him. Yeah, it's clearly. On third and four now. Again, the hand of Willie Green on the left side. He's well short of that first down. Brian King made the stop. He's got an interesting nickname, Brian King. What would that be? His mates call him Seahorn. Ah. He doesn't like it much. He's a pretty good player. I think it's for the wrong reason though, that he doesn't like it. Just for Jason Seahorn's ability, I'm very happy with it. Kevin McMyler, the punt, and it's out of bounds. 7.45 to play here in the second. And West Virginia enjoying a 17-0 lead. On ESPN2 tonight, see the 25th-ranked Buffaloes take on the Rams in that all Colorado showdown at 6 Eastern from Mile High. Also on ESPN, it's Southern Miss taking on Tennessee and a couple of top 25-ranked clubs, and then Arizona-Utah at 9 Eastern here on ESPN as well. I think Southern Miss has a shot at an upset. Tennessee T. Martin is gone. We opened a Tennessee last season. What an atmosphere that is. We'll have some more of that tonight. Tory Johnson had the reception there. Let's go down to the field and Dave Ryan. Well, Steve, what a great start for the West Virginia defense. They've created a lot of momentum on the sideline, really put some electricity through all these guys here. Chris Edmonds in particular, he has really got this team going, causing a fumble on the option pitch with four from Green and the interception as well. Remember, they had a really big trouble last year stopping the running game. They allowed eight different rushes, 100-plus yards. Their theme, guys, to shock the nation. They're shocking BC right now, big time. Check out the disturbing rushing yards. Not all that good for West Virginia for this point either. Cooper Rigo, who scored the touchdown that put the Mountaineers up 17-0 on the carry. Curtis Bolden made the stop. Well, as Dave pointed out, that was really a problem for them last year. They gave up nearly 200 yards per game. And as Dave documented, eight different guys had 100-yard games against them. So that was certainly, certainly an area in which Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator for West Virginia, realized had to be rectified. Don Nealon came out and he said in his 20 previous seasons, the worst defense he's had here was last season. That can't make a defensive coordinator feel too good either. Holy cow. Loose football is all the way back to the 30 as Lewis tried to pick it up. And it's batted around and dropped at the 25-yard line. And Scott Bradley is the one that had a golden opportunity. You can see the reaction of Frank Spaziani saying, that's a way to go, that's a way to hustle back, but they just couldn't quite come up with it. Rondrick Smith recovered it. Well, Gillum launches the missile over the head of Lewis, who really appeared like he wasn't quite ready. Now, right here, watch Bradley hustle in and push him away. It looks like he has the ball for just a second. Now, watch, it's right behind his butt. He just, if he had eyes in the back of his head, he could have seen it. Instead, West Virginia is able to maintain possession. A loss of 27. That'll put Fazolari on to punt it away again. Dedrick DeWalt. Take it and out of bounds 
at the 23-yard line. It's 52 yards and no return. Great punt. 17-0. It's all going right for the most part for the Mountaineers. Boston College expected to be a pretty good offensive club, yet they've got nothing to show for it so far today. They've run 19 plays from scrimmage, netting a total of 33 yards. That's 1.7 yards per play. And that's certainly not going to get them back in the football game. See if Cedric Washington can. He's hit just about at the line of scrimmage by Sean Hackett. You know, it's interesting, Steve. A, a big chunk of that yardage were the first two plays of the game when they ran the two hook patterns, remember? And it seemed to me that Hasselbeck was getting off to a good start. Maybe they're going to throw the ball downfield a little bit, but give West Virginia defense, West Virginia's defense credit. They've shut everything down since then. And again, just two players on the West Virginia defense returning with the starting experience, especially an inexperienced secondary, and BC has not been able to take advantage of that after the first two plays. Here's Hasselbeck to throw, and could not connect with DeWalt. Might have got a pretty catchable ball, it looked like, maybe a bit behind him. Richard Bryant was right there with him. Remember, DeWalt was their go-to guy last year with 38 catches. The only thing we mentioned mentioned his name so far has been that drop punt. West Virginia's gonna, done a nice job of shutting him out, or rather Boston College has done a poor job of finding him. Brings up a third down and eight. Hasselbeck so far, four of eight for 33 yards, and he's been picked off once. Out of the shotgun. Snap is a good one. Hasselbeck steps up and fires, and he overthrows his target, Jamal Burke. Again, good coverage on the play by that secondary of West Virginia. Ben Meehan was there along with Brian King. And Steve, the crowd acknowledges that. If, there's, if, if there is a community that is into their team, it's got to be this one in Morgantown. You check the internet, you check the papers, it's nothing but Mountaineers. And so they're very aware that they have the inexperienced secondary that up to this point has held up quite well. Here's the punt. After some pretty good pressure on Kevin McMiller, able to get it away. Antonio Brown from the 30, and he slips up at about the 36-yard line. Anthony Nolan help him, helped him slip up. Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator for West Virginia, who's been here an awful lot of years, was seemingly curt with us yesterday, Steve. Very monosyllabic answers. But he's got all the answers, at least thus far today, he, as he was talking about. He had anticipated that they are going to run between the tackles, and then he said his men were going to have to step up and actually play. We're not going to fool anybody. Well, his young man have done exactly that, as you can see him diagramming what it is he wants to be done on the next series. His charges have been tremendous here in the first quarter and a half. Dunlap played here in the early 70s and actually still holds the single game and season tackle records. The sixth all time on the West Virginia career tackle list. It's the wide receiver Antonio Brown on the end around. Gets a chunk of yardage there, maybe four or five on the play. Dunlap very, very astute. Somebody, a real observer of the game. He mentioned he was curt, maybe short with us, and then at the end he said, hey, you know what, guys? Talk to me after we've played one game, and I'll have a lot more for you. And so you certainly could understand that. You can see right there, one of the things that he wanted to do is he wanted less than four yards on first down in particular. And up to this point, West Virginia's done a nice job of that against Boston College's offense. They give him seven on that end around to Brown. So on a second and three off the play action, here's Lewis. Oh, he's got a man, and he threw it over his head. The wrong angle was looking for Corey Ivey, who had beaten his man. Looked like there was some help there, but Ivey would have had six if he could have connected. Ivey had a little bit of an out-and-up move. You can see him come downfield. Here's the experienced Ivey with the hook and go. There he is, he's able to get, he's wide open. And in fairness to Ivy, that's a terrific route, but a very poor throw. You gotta at least keep the ball in bounds to give him a chance to get it. But you can see number 13, Willie Poole, is the defensive back fool on the play. And the routes that you talk about and the way he runs, that's what the coaching staff told him. Might not be the best receiver, but technically is their best wide receiver. Again, Brown is the flyer with all the speed and the big play potential. Quarterback draw, Lewis to run with it, gets around one man and gets out of bounds, leap for the first down, and he should have it. Willie Poole had a chance to make a stop on him before he got to the marker, but Lewis beats him there, 
And let's see if we get a measurement. Should be pretty close for a first down. Looks to be just a little bit short, Steve, and I think the crowd's a little upset about that mark. Actually, a pretty good play on the part of Lewis on the quarterback draw. He was supposed to go up the middle, found nothing, cuts to the outside and avoids the tackle, but was running out of AstroTurf. Leans forward, and sometimes they give you that arm, and sometimes they don't. But from here, it looks like he's a little short. Brad Lewis has really changed the opinion. I, I think of the coaching staff. He got himself the first out of the coaching staff and of his teammates by his leadership from the end of the spring practice to now. They've really all fallen in love with him. We get another update now. Here's Brian Kenny. Steve, even if this was your update special, this a bit of a surprise. Toledo, 10 starters back on offense. Chester Taylor, one of them. Chester Taylor, over 1,100 yards on the ground last year, plunging in for another touchdown on Penn State. 17 to nothing right now getting toward the half, Steve. All right, Brian. Steve, one of the things with regards to that is I think people just took it for granted. Joe Paterno was going to get his seven wins. Wow. Lewis stays on his feet. He was swung around and then throws. It was nearly intercepted to the back of the receiver. Now, looking for Corey Ivey. Now, Steve, what you saw there is you saw Corey Ivey engage with the defensive back. This flag can't, should not go against Ordway if they're going to call interference because clearly it was a situation where Ivey was downfield blocking. Sean Guthrie is the man who let Lewis escape, had the chance to make the big play. Let's see. Well, that's a good call. And so what they're going to... How gonna, about that one? That's interesting because <laughs> they called Ivy for that. He was thinking that he was going to run. Once again, a situation where both flags are the byproduct of thinking Lewis is going to run. But what power he had. You mentioned Guthrie. He didn't let him go. He thought he was going to spike him. He winds him around and throws him, but instead he's able to keep his feet. Lewis just trying to do something with the play. Ineligible receiver. Downfield. Offense. That penalty has been declined. However... We have offensive pass interference, offensive team, 15-yard penalty remains first down. Well, again, now look at Ivy right here. He's pushing on him. He's pushing on him. But actually what he's doing here is he's blocking. He's anticipating that there's going to be a run instead of a throw. The official, that, that could have been a non-call. They could have let that go just in terms of the fact they made a mistake. But usually, usually, Steve, when you see that happen, it goes the other way. It's tough being a DB at any level. The numbers on Ivy so far in his big catch. Hey, two great examples of why they love Lewis, right? Another quarterback maybe goes down, takes the sack, he stays on his feet. The play before that, he fights for the extra yard, getting the first down. We'll see what Brad Lewis is all about. But the penalty will make it a first and 26. Quick drop and the throw was behind Antonio Brown and great coverage on the play again by Willie Poole. Not much there even if he would have caught the football. You know, you, me you mentioned Lewis and, and praised him for that and by the same token, you know, praise and damned at the same time. Some of the throws, he had Ivy open for what would have been a big play. Right here he throws the ball behind. He's a little erratic right now. And people are talking about how they appreciate the fact that his leadership, he seems to be more of a leader than Mark Bolger, the former quarterback, but up to this point he doesn't quite have the experience or the skill. Second and 26. Lewis, they're trying to set up the screen, and that does not work well either. Looking to get the football in the hands of Avon Coburn, and that'll bring up the always fun third and 26. Yep. Field level to Dave Ryan. Well, you guys are talking about how tough Brad Lewis is. He really got a lot of respect from his teammates. It all started last November against these BC Eagles. He took a heavy hit right to the helmet, but came right back to the huddle. Teammates thought he knocked out for the game. He said, don't worry about it. I'm all right. Guys like Corey Ivey really took note of that. And guys, during the offseason, he's been lifting with a lineman. He benches 320 pounds, setting a quarterback record here at West Virginia. His coaches call him a street fighter. He's a tough guy. Dave uh, Lewis, actually, when you look at the bench, he was fifth strongest quarterback in the nation. Mike Bath of Miami of Ohio benching 425. <laughs> now, wait, 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 wait. I got I to ask something here. While they mark off substitution infraction, Boston College had 13 people in the huddle, and a couple people Remains ran off. Third down. And that's something that they're going to enforce strongly this year. A guy who can bench press as a quarterback, isn't that yeah. kind of like having a goalie who can really skate? I mean, <laughs> come on. And, and, who, and who's compiling Actually, this? You who, know, no, no, no. Who's out there compiling this? I hate the to correct you. The top five you. bench pressing quarterback. I hate to correct you on your first hockey reference no, in the season. No, no, but no. the goaltender is well known as the best skater on the team. Here's Cobra now carrying out to the right side. 
Well, p part of that I think, is just being in the room with the guys, right? Part of the respect Absolutely. And, and, and bench pressing. A lot of quarterbacks probably don't work on the weights too much. The stereotypical well, no, 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 they, they do, but but when you look at that, uh, what I had read, Dave said 320. I'd heard 375, right. and I'd also heard as much as 390. But again, you know, as I say, I, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily sure I want my quarterback to be that buff. That's just me. And as for who's keeping track of these things, I don't know. I read it the paper. Here's the snap, low snap for Fazilari, and there's a problem on it there. Holy cow. It was blocked. Ralph Parent got to it off the low snap. Steve, he was there so quickly that he actually had to slow down to take it off of his foot. And again, I'm not sure that Fazilari was back far enough. Normally, you're supposed to be about 15 yards. I mean, he, Parent was right there, right in his face. This could be the break that BC needs to get back in this game. They needed something. Boston College comes out on the field now, and they'll open first and 10 from the 34-yard line. Have done very little offensively, but here their best opportunity. Cedric Washington off tackle for a pickup of one or two. Back to the block punt. We'll take a look just completely unblocked right here. Look at the angle he gets. He's not supposed to get that good of an angle. You can see he's right on top of it. Parent, number 80 in this case, Braxton ran right past him. He was supposed to block Parent, but he did not. And the result is disastrous for West Virginia. And BC, with, without a doubt, the best field position they've had. See what they can do with it on second and eight. Hasselbeck's out of the shotgun. It's like four receivers in the pattern. Come on, five now. Hasselbeck is hit as he throws. Pass is completed to Cedric Washington to get half of it, and Brian King made the stop. Big third down here for Boston College for a lot of reasons. Obviously down 17 to nothing. But they're, they're in, they're in long-distance field goal range here. This possibly, Steve, could be four-down territory. Third down and six, the crowd getting behind their Mountaineer defense now. Hasselbeck middle throws screen. across the middle, able to connect to Dewan Daniels, and he's very close to the first down. He's going to be a little, I'm thinking that he's going to be a little bit short, but what I didn't understand about Dewan Daniels is he cuts across, he's got momentum for whatever reason, he slowed down and tried to cut in the middle. I don't understand. He had a lot on the other side. And we'll get the measurement. With 2.28 to play here in the first half, West Virginia leading by 17. Well, they didn't have to make a decision. And he's got the first down. Let's check in with Brian Kenny. Tell us what's up for halftime. Thank you very much, Steve. Sports Center in game coming your way at the half. Michael Vick already with some early electrifying highlights. Chris Lee and Kirk will be here as well with their analysis. And San Jose State showing some spunk against number one Nebraska. That's coming up at the half. All right, Brian, thank you. We look forward for that, to that on first and 10 now from the 24 yard line. BC trying to get on the board before halftime. Hasselbeck on first down will hand it off to Washington, the right side. And he is taken down for a loss. David Upchurch, the first man there for West Virginia. West Virginia has had eight in the box the entire first half. And Boston College has not been able to take advantage of it. They have just been swarming the ball carrier. And as we documented, Washington, the second leading rusher in the Big Eight last year with over 1,100 yards, just cannot get started. People in the backfield, look at all the blue shirts. Attacking Washington has absolutely no place to go. And Washington had himself a ball game against West Virginia last season at 181 yards on the ground. He was the Big East Offensive Player of the Week. He's got just 14 yards here. Hasselbeck throwing up top. Did he pull it down? Yes, he's got it. Derek DeWalt 
making the catch. And here's the inexperience on the part of Bryant. Here you have the deep slant route of the skinny post, depending upon your terminology. And watch, watch Bryant see it. Now here's the cut right here. Now he cuts in front of him and needs to get in front. Instead, DeWalt does a great job of keeping his body between Bryant and the ball and coming down with it. We mentioned DeWalt earlier as their go-to guy. He finally comes up with a very big play. For the De Eagles. Dedrick DeWalt on the receiving end. Sorry, Todd, of that 23-yard reception. Send the man in motion. Hand it off up the middle. Touchdown for Boston College. William Green on the touchdown, and the Eagles are on the board. So the locked punt proves costly for West Virginia. Steve Paul LeCare and Michael Cook did a tremendous job on the left side of that line creating that hole. When, it, when you're on the two or three yard line and the guy falls in relatively untouched, that means your offensive line is doing a great job. BC on to attempt the extra point. Mike Sutphin checks in and splits the uprights. And with a minute 27 to play here in the first half, got ourselves a football game. BC's on the board. They still trail West Virginia now, 17-7. Steve Levy, Todd Christensen, Dave Ryan. Hope you're having a great holiday weekend so far. Hope it gets even better. West Virginia has the lead. BC finally on the board. Coming up at halftime, Brian Kenny and Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet. Sports Center in game, the Holiday Inn halftime report. And the victimized, you can guess what that's all about. And we'll preview number three, Alabama, getting set to take on UCLA. That's all coming up at halftime. Mike Sutphin to kick it off for Boston College. Sean Terry is deep for West Virginia. From the goal line, here's Terry. Carrying it to 20, had a bit of a seam. And he's able to stumble out just shy of the 30-yard line. Doug Bassett on um, the special teams tackle for BC. Now, Steve, what do you think here, West Virginia? Are they going to be content to go in with a 10-point halftime lead, or do you think they have enough confidence in Lewis to let him spread it out and see if he can move it up the field? I think they see. I think they take a shot here. Do you? A minute 21 to play. I tell you what, though. You go the other way? Well, I'm just saying the last two series, he's been very inaccurate. And it would just be, it would be horrendous for West Virginia to turn the ball over here in this situation. I think the first play will dictate an awful lot. All right. It's got Antonio Brown split out far side to the left. Corey Ivey on the right side and out of the eye. And they do hand it off to Avon Coburn. Boston College should call timeout here. Stop the clock. Because West Virginia is going to want to run it out. Might as well use your timeouts. Make them punt. See if you can get something going on the other end. Clock is still ticking as you see. I agree. No sign of a timeout for Boston College. As you look at head coach Tom O'Brien. Well, evidently both are content yeah. to do that. <laughs> Here we are trying to, trying to get hyped up and get excited about, hey, we're going to like the, uh, maybe not. Eight seconds left on the play clock. We'll see how far they take it down. With 38 left in the half. And they pitch it out to the left to Coburn. He picks up three on the play. And 30 seconds left. Let's see if they have to run one more. Now, of course, you ask yourself the question, Boston College calls timeout now. Of course, makes perfect sense, Doc. Well, the reason I say that, and, and at the result, is because simply because of the fact that you're saying to yourself, why? You might as well use the time. I mean, might as well use it. Right. But why not use it uh, 30 seconds ago? Yep. We'll be right back. I have never been so challenged in my entire life. There is that Jesuit ideal there of learning just for the sake of learning and enriching yourself. The atmosphere is very, very vibrant and very up. So I think that it's the sense of community. When I have a BC sticker on my car, you know, people will pull up beside you and they'll beep and they'll wave because they went to BC and you go to BC and there's that bond there even though you never met them before, which I think is something really wonderful. We're not just like everybody else. Virginia has done it. Here's the snap. The kick is away. It, it is good! Boston College wins! Last play of the ball game to the tight end, Brominski. He's he down! Boston 
Overcast day here in Morgantown, West Virginia. BC was concerned about the humidity. Are they talking about 95, 97%? It's not that bad, only 62% humidity here. But here's Lewis throwing after the timeout and completes it to Corey Ivey. And another timeout is, oh no, they're saying no, they're saying not a completion, that it must have hit the turf. Back judge spread it up to say that, and of course Ivey disagrees and so does Naylan. Once again, kind of a wobbly throw on the part of Lewis. He had plenty of time to throw. Take a look for yourselves and watch into the hands of number eight. Lewis has plenty of time. He runs the dig route to the middle of the field. Watch if his hands get underneath. I thought they did. Of course, I'm a pass catcher, and I always want to give the guy the advantage, but it appeared to me that Ivy made the catch. And, of course, that saves Boston College a timeout if, indeed, they have to hit up the field. See if BC, you know, BC's coming after blocking the last punt attempt by Mark Fazolari. Again, a low snap. A block punt had a low snap in front of it as well. Gets this one away. And BC with Dedrick walk carrying the football. And did he lose it again? As flags fly from all over. With 11 seconds left in the first half. Trevor White clipped, and that's going to move them back. So obviously they're not going to do that. But special teams have been an issue today. Some of the little plays in particular. First of all, watch Zach Anglin, the punter, who makes a great catch on the field goal to enable West Virginia to get that field goal. DeWalt can't quite cut up field, even though he's got about 10 or 15 yards. This time the punt is blocked. That leads to Boston College's first touchdown. So as you pointed out, Steve, one of the things that happens in, in the inaugural game of the season for both teams, a lot of penalties, and certainly they struggle on special teams. We've seen both today here in the first half. Well, Don Nealon said that there's just no time to prepare. He said the, the kick return coverage, for example, they practice a total of three times. That's one of those things that's very difficult to practice, evidently, coming into a season. And I remember last year, Steve, it's interesting, even last year in the middle of the season, I would guess that in games that you and I did every other, or maybe every third game, there's a kick return for a touchdown. Right. That's a lot of block punts as well. We're keeping that theme here today. On first and 10 for BC. And they'll keep it on the ground. And run out the clock Cedric Washington the final copy final carry and we are at halftime here in Morgantown West Virginia the Mountaineers lead BC 17-7 out of Brian Kenny three times they have bounced back to have winning seasons two of the three they've gone to bowl games they would hope for that similar scenario here Todd James puts it in the air and the second half is underway. Willie Green from the goal line cuts to the 15, trying to break it out to the sideline, knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. More on Nealon and those rebounding from the losing seasons, and here are the specifics. Pretty good rebounding, and then, of course, the big question mark here in 2000. He's always, oh, BC's always a friend for Don Nealon. He always seems to play have a good winning record against them. He's dominated them over the years. A 14-4-1 record against Boston College. You like to get off to a good start? I just realized it wasn't one big question mark. It was two. Did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, a 4-7 and seven season will do that That's to you. That's right. Lots of question marks. So here's BC trailing by 10 to open up half number two. On first and 10, here's the quarterback Tim Hasselbeck throwing. And appeared to be some miscommunication as he looked to hit Robert Ellis, the tight end. Once again, it was a similar route that he ran earlier to his fullback, and that was a little bit of an out and up, and this one woefully behind him. Hasselbeck, you know, we talked about how he completes his first two passes, has a little confidence, has it working. Since that time, he just has not been able to get it going. Ellis, the tight end, is an interesting story. He left the team prior to spring practice for personal reasons. He wanted to return, and Coach O'Brien said, hey, Will vote the players will vote on it and they voted him back on the team and now he's out to do anything they ask him to do as Hasselbeck carries it David Upchurch brought him down after a pickup of five there's a play with his groin problems last year he never could have run but now with the operation he's a little bit more mobile willing to call his number more they're going to run a little more speed option this year the quarterback draws get the quarterback involved in the rushing game third down and five an obvious 
first big play of the second half. BC tries to get something going offensively. And that pass able to connect to Dedrick DeWalt should be enough for the first down. Richard Bryan on the tackle there. Dedrick DeWalt came up with a big play at the end of the first half to put them in position to score. Now he runs the quick slant. Difficult catch, actually. The ball was thrown low, but he's able to come up with it. Fresh set of downs for Boston College. The sun trying to creep through the clouds. They send DeWalt in motion, and they hand it off to Cedric Washington. Rick Sherrod and Sean Hackett at the stop. See, that's about a five or six yard gain, which really, I mean, this sounds funny, but that's actually pretty huge, because up to this point on first down, Boston College had been averaging barely over two yards on first down, so that's more of what Boston College needs to do. And that's, for Washington, that's only his second gain of more than two yards. And he's their big back as you look at the conditions. Here at Mountaineer Field, capacity from 63,000. They're hoping to get upwards of 60. Here's Hasselbeck, all sorts of time, and throws an incomplete. Looking to Jamal Burke with all sorts of time. Back to the studio. Here's Brian Kenny. Steve Todd was mentioning earlier seven wins for Joe Paterno chasing Bear Bryant. Seven wins looking far off here. Toledo. Tavares Bolden here in the second half to Lyle Green. 24 to nothing. Toledo leading Penn State. But then Richard Casey coming back for the Nittany Lions. Then cross field finding Larry Johnson. Johnson going all the way in 61 yards, but they missed the extra point. Still a stunning score so far. 24 to 6, Steve. All right, Brian, thanks. Back here in Morgantown, Keith Hemmings is on the receiving end of the Tim Hasselbeck pass. First reception for Hemmings, a pickup of 10 and another first down. Slant route that requires a little bit of courage because you know you've got to go over the middle. Here comes Hemmings, one, two, three, and cut. He knows there's going to be some blue shirts. Lowers his head, Hackett drops him, but he's able to hold on. Nice play by the youngster. This is exactly what Boston College needed, right? Uh, they get the touchdown late in the first half, and now actually putting together some kind of drive to start the second. Out of the eye to send a man in motion. And Hasselbeck trying to mix it up between the ground game and the passing game. Gives it to Cedric Washington. Kyle Caden brought him down in the middle. Well, the conversation that Dave Ryan alluded to earlier between Tom O'Brien and Dana Bible is producing some fruit here as they're having a nice mix of pass and run. Once again, a good first down gain, nearly five yards. That's something that Boston College was unable to do in the first half. Second and six now across midfield at the 47 of West Virginia. Off the play action, Hasselbeck the throw, got a man able to complete the short pass. Could be very close to a first down as Hasselbeck picks himself up off the turf. That was Dewan Daniels on the receiving end. Dewan Daniels is the youngster that they're counting on for big plays this year. He was a do-everything guy last year, averaged 27 and a half yards on kickoff returns. Had that 100-yarder to begin the game against Syracuse. They're waiting for him to do some big things. He's a 10-6, 100-meter man. So he's their version of Antonio Brown. Third and short. Willie Green checks in behind Ryan Upsler, the fullback now. And they give it to Green, trying the left side. She should have enough for the first down. A lot of that depends on the spot, Steve. That didn't look terribly generous. Already calling a fourth down. Wow. Nobody moving from the sidelines. I think they're going to go for it. All right, so here we go. Fourth and let's call it inches. The 42-yard line, a Mountaineer defense. I was wrong. Super strong in the first half. Steve, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm not going to get... <laughs> After this show is over with, yeah. I, none of those 1-800 shows, none of the psychics are going to call me. Because <laughs> everything I've predicted has been way off. Measurements are wrong. They're going to go four to four downs wrong. Never mind. Just forget. And they had been calling you in the past, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Richard Bryant is deep off the Kevin McMyler punt, but he won't get a chance to return it as it bounces out of bounds. We'll see where they spot it at the 11-yard line. So West Virginia holds on BC's best drive of the football game, but it doesn't produce any points. 
Boston College off that very strong season last year, but it didn't finish up all that good. They lost their last two games, including the bowl game, by a combined 58 points. Kind of soured a memory of a pretty good season. Here's West Virginia with Avon Colbert cutting it to the middle. Had one man to beat from making a really big game, but he's got a first down for West Virginia before Willie Poole brought him down. We go down to Dave Ryan. Well, Steve, let's finish up the information on Antonio Gray. He is out for the game. Their best defensive lineman, sprained left knee, possible cartilage tear. Same goes for their starting cornerback, DJ Sutton. So two key starters are gone. As for Gray, a moment ago, slapping the helmets of his teammates Spell defensive lineman trying to get him pumped up right now. He's just a cheerleader All right, Dave. Thanks for the information. Well heard Boston College Huge loss. It really is Hand off to Coburn again trying the middle Gray was trying to trying to be the guy to replace Chris Hovan They said he had the skills and the talent just wish they had Hovan's work ethic well, if he has a rehab ahead of him, he'll certainly he'll certainly need that. The uh, questions about the front seven for Boston College will continue. Injury and an experience. Second down and six after the Coburn run. Two receivers out to the left. Quick screen is knocked down at the line. They were trying to get it out to Antonio Brown, but Curtis Bolden, who's filling in for a pair of linebackers for Boston College, you go three deep to get to Bolden, and he's the guy that makes the play. This is interesting. It looked for just for a second like it might be thrown backwards. There he is on the 24, and he bats it down somewhere between the 20. Well, all right. Incomplete. That was awfully close. Tennessee Buffalo, Tennessee Buffalo. Sunday okay. night on ESPN. <laughs> leading very nicely into that promo time. Still looks forward to you, right? Still a forward <laughs> Every pass. time you look at yeah, it. Absolutely. Does it get any closer? Nope. Nope. Well, the city of Buffalo can't get a break, huh? Bills, Sabres. Here's Lewis throwing, and it is, should have been picked off. It was right in the hands of Willie Poole, and you see how angry he is. That hit him square in the numbers, it appeared. This, this is a very poor throw on the part of Lewis, and Poole does a great job of anticipating the hook route. Watch number 13 in your screen. It's going to break down. Right there, he knows it's a hook. Now he's able to come in. Braxton is not where he is supposed to be. He's a little bit too far inside, and certainly Poole should have come up with that one. So West Virginia gets away with a break. They've had some trouble on the snaps. We've seen a couple of low snaps in a row to the punter, Mark Fazolari. That one looked to be pretty good. And Fazolari gets it up in the air. To Dedrick DeWalt trying to cut to the middle. And he'll be brought down shy of the 30-yard line. David Carter on the special team stop. Trelesky did a nice job that time, as you pointed out, a couple of struggles earlier. And that time, Fazolari was about 13 yards back, but usually it's a standard of about 15 yards. And I really think that, that was a contributing factor as to why that punt was blocked last time. That and the fact that Braxton didn't block his man. 51-yard punt, a seven-yard return. And you know, nowadays, Steve, at the professional level, you have guys that are on the team strictly to do that one thing. That is their job. They're not a position player. That's all they do. New England Patriots, for example. Here's Hasselbeck to throw, looking up top. Got a man. It's DeWalt, and he juggled. It would have been out of bounds anyway. And again, good coverage. Very impressed by Brian King. The redshirt freshman from Maryland. Right at the end of the play, there's a hand fight going on between DeWalt and King, and I think DeWalt spent a little too much time with the hand fight right here because look, I think this is a catchable ball. See, he's pushing off, can't get that left hand up in time, and as a result, he's not able to come up with it. Maybe if he spends just a little less time with the hand fight, he's able to get it. You know, and he would have been in bounds there if he would have caught that. I thought it was clear it would have been out of bounds regardless. But and, was a, and that's a classic case of what the coaches call 11 on 11. Numbers. Come on, you're with me. Second and ten. And that pass. Well, if it was dropped a good coverage, it was right in the hands of Mike Guazzo. Kyle Caden had the coverage. You listen, to, you listen to receiving coaches tell you all the time, catch it in your hands, catch it in your hands. There's a situation where you don't. Go ahead and trap it in your chest. Let it hit you in the stomach. Because when you're between the hashes like that, you're going to get hit immediately. Instead, as he extends his hands and the ball hits him, it drops. 
Bring up a third down and ten. For BC, Hasselbeck out of the shotgun. You see the conversions today. Two receivers out to the left. Hasselbeck looking to his right now, scrambling away from pressure, directing traffic, and he tries to throw it ahead, and there's the flag. Way past the line. I mean, that past was line. He might have had a foot out of bounds as well. A lot of things going on in that one play. None of them good for Boston College. But, you know, usually it's close. You want to have that replay and go, oh, you know what, not quite sure. Look at the hand, look at the foot. Well, in that case, he threw the ball. The line of scrimmage is the 29. There's he no threw it about the 35. <laughs> and as you pointed out, Steve, because he stepped out of bounds, <laughs> they picked up the flag. Now, this is the line of scrimmage. Now, watch as he scrambles out. You're going to see his foot go out of bounds right there. Right at the 30-yard line, and then four yards farther up, he throws the ball and gets rid of it. Chris Edmonds had the good pressure to force him into the mistake. Antonio Brown is deep for West Virginia at the 24-yard line. And Kevin McMyler will boot it away. McMyler from his own 18. And he gets it away with three blue jerseys around him. And a signal for the fair catch by Antonio Brown. We'll step out, eight and a half to play here in the third quarter from Morgantown with West Virginia up by 10. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. And by new Bex Light. All beer, no compromise. Look for Bex Light in a clear bottle wherever you buy Bex. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia, the Big East opener for both of these schools and for the league for that matter. Lewis off the play action. He really sell it there. He's got heavy pressure, escapes a couple of white jerseys, and fires it out of bounds, and that'll bring up a second and ten for West Virginia. And you really look at the contrast between these two schools. Not just BC off a good season, West Virginia off a tough season trying to bounce back, but you look at BC from the big city and here as opposed to playing in Morgantown. A lot of differences. Well, of course, in Boston, you're able to get lost in the shuffle because of the fact there's so many other sports going on, so much going on in Boston. In Morgantown, it's a different story. What ends up happening in Morgantown is that this is the only game in town, and the result is the Internet sites, the newspaper, the television, they're just deluged with Mountaineer football. One school covered by the Boston Globe and the Boston Herald, the other school by the Mountaineer Express, <laughs> for example. Here's the pitch now to Avon Coburn, and he breaks it out for the first down. Well, the passing game wasn't working. Lewis had missed on his last seven. Avon calling there for the first down and a pickup of 15. Here's Brian Kenny. Steve, Virginia Tech, the defense rebuilding. The offense is up and running. Virginia Tech and Akron. Here's Michael Vick this time in the air. Andre Davis, nearly 1,000 yards receiving last year. Look at this bullet. Yikes. Davis, 35-yard touchdown catch, 42-17 in the third. All right, Brian, thanks. A bit closer here, 17-7. And there are the numbers on Coburn. Starting to pick that average up. You know, I had to laugh a little bit about when I'm reading the periodicals, talking about he's the new wave of quarterback. As if there are guys that are 6'2", 215, run 4'2", 5, you can throw the ball 80 yards, you just, they're, they're all over the place. <laughs> Come on. Coburn on that carry, there's a flag on the play. We'll see if they bring it back. Just so exciting to watch. Coburn is, and I think they'll take the yardage. Actually, I was talking about Vic, but... Coburn as well. And both. Yeah. I was going to say, he's really picked it up here in the third quarter. And he is fun to watch. And a very animated young man, as we had lunch with him yesterday. Native of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I said, hey, that, wasn't that where Ali is from? He goes, what? <laughs> Once again, see, I, I show my age. You know, for a long time, you know, he resided in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. He had no idea. Coburn is out of the game now. Get a breather. Cooper Rigo scored a touchdown earlier has checked in for West Virginia in the backfield after the penalty it'll be a first and five situation oh see that's messed up if you're the running back you just had a six yard gain you took my numbers away come on get off it's not right and there's a look at Rigo the touchdown maker earlier this afternoon send the man in motion and they hand it off to Cooper Rigo 
And he is short of the first down. Bring up a real second and short. Scott Bradley made the stop there. See, we talked a little bit about the offensive line of Boston College. West Virginia has asserted itself a little bit here in the third quarter in particular. Matt Wilson, Terry Dixon, Rick Gillum, Brad Nell, and Tanner Russell, the right tackle. Tanner Russell, interesting story, coming back from a shoulder surgery. And I see, you know what, I, I, whenever I hear these things, I'm just amazed. They said the man bench press is 520. I say, what? 520? You can't do that? Man. Well, you know, 490. But. Second and one. <laughs> That's a quarter of a time. I'll believe anything you tell me. You know that. I don't put anything past you. Man, oh, man. West Virginia will call timeout. And that'll allow us to step out. Mountaineers by 10 here in the third. Back here in Morgantown at Mountaineer Field, the 21st year of this stadium. West Virginia owns a 715 winning percentage in this building. Look to add to that up by 10. 7.07 to play here in the third in an ideal offensive situation. Love those second and one calls. Let's see what they do with it. And they hand it off for the first down. It's Cooper Rigo, and he's just across midfield. Cooper Rigo carrying the ball. First down, one for Virginia. We mentioned Tanner Russell, number 79, pulling out. Bumping his man, coming downfield, going for a second man, but Rigo's on the other side of the line of scrimmage. West Virginia across midfield now. With a fresh set of downs. And they gave it to the first man, the quick hitter through. And again, it's Cooper Rigo on the carry. And he's close to another first down. That was Co Coburn, rather. Coburn that time back in. Rigo's, Rigo's certainly a quality back, but Coburn has the great cutback ability. You see he's able to knife through, cut back against the grain a little bit, get some extra yardage. Tough to bring down, despite the fact that he's only 195. Avon Coburn, 19 carries for 91 yards now. The season finale here at home, he had 210 last season, setting the stadium record. Coburn again, uh, should be good enough for another first down. Nice methodical drive here by West Virginia moving down the field. Well, as you pointed out, Steve, that was, that was I'm forced to admit, very observant. Lewis is struggling. Lewis is six for 18. Obviously not a very good percentage, and most of his yardage came on only two completions, and so how nice it is when you're struggling to be able to lean over and hand it to number 22. And he's missed on his last seven attempts, so the ground game makes sense. Coburn had 51 yards in the first half. He's already got 42 yards this quarter. Might want to stay with that with five and a half left in the third, but they don't. Lewis off the play action, and they able to complete it to the 20 and out of bounds. It's the tight end, Sean Burton. So there, your classic case of the running game setting up the passing game. One of the big losses for West Virginia was tight end Anthony Beck, first-round pick of the New York Jets. You see Burton here on the corner out, and just as we were talking about the struggles that Lewis has had, he puts one right on the money to number 81. Take a look at Russell. Bumps one man back to Gillum, and there he is up top. Absolutely, absolutely spikes his man as Lewis takes a shot. Watch him go down, personifying the toughness that you made reference to earlier, Steve. 21 yards on that play. Coaching staff actually thinks Burton as a sophomore. I hope he fought or had them back one as a sophomore. His flags fly. Looks like it'd be a motion penalty. 5.24 left here in the third. Dead ball. Four stars. Offense. So there's the penalty. Let's go to Dave Ryan now, who's somewhere beyond the end zone. Dave? 
Well, Steve, just beyond the south end zone, here's the WVU weight room, and that's where Tanner Russell over the last year has worked himself back into shape. Coming off the off-season shoulder surgery, where he couldn't even lift this 45-pound bar. He couldn't bench press anything. In fact, with his strength coach, he had to schedule private time. He was so embarrassed, didn't want his teammates to see him. Well, now through the nine months of rehabilitation and tough, hard work, he's back to being the top bench presser on the WVU offensive line and the entire team. 525 pounds. Through hard work, he's in great shape once again. I noticed uh, Dave only got the 45-pound bar up slightly. Did you pick that up or not? <laughs> well, we're not... Uh... <clears throat> Dave's chances of making Sydney as a power lifter aren't real good. <laughs> There's an Olympic lifter, rather. Boy, I tell you what, 525, that is astonishing, especially for somebody who, who is that tall and that long arm. Usually your bench presses are your short, squatty guys, so that's very impressive rehabilitation on the part of Russell. Second down and 10 for West Virginia. Pitch to Coburn. They had him in the backfield momentarily, but a second effort. He's able to pick up maybe a yard on the play. Let's head back to the studio and Brian Kenny. Steve, we check back in with Nebraska, taking on San Jose State. Cornhuskers with everybody back in the backfield, not just Derek Crouch, but Dan Alexander breaking loose. Six feet tall, 245 pounds, less than explosive speed, but he's in for the touchdown. It's 35 to 6. Remember, Alexander was the one in the game that you and I had, Steve. He was the one that rushed for about 140 yards in that game. But I, I you know what? I, I know I'm getting a little bit older, but I think with Nebraska's offensive line, even I could count out about 80. I mean, those guys just move people out. A third down at 11. Some question on the play calling there. So they call a timeout. West Virginia will call the timeout. That's their first. And that's their second timeout. They have one remaining, I beg your pardon. Well, they're down now in field goal range, and Bill Legg does not does not want to make a mistake here. He wants to make sure that everybody is on the same page communication-wise. It's interesting because Lewis has looked so good at times, and other times he's just really struggled, been very inaccurate. See Bill Legg right there. Talk about a number of different things. Steve, you had queried him about some numbers. You wanted to know numbers like yards or things of that nature, points, and he had this big list of things that he had. And of course, number one was outscore his opponent, and you and I were walking out, I said, did they need something else after that? That's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that, that at the bottom, it said 70 yards or less in terms of minus yardage, and you know, you hear that, that makes sense to me, but he counts like plays brought back after penalty. You have a 25-yard game that's wiped out, and a 15-yard penalty intact to that, that all adds up to 40 yards minus yard. That's a tough, tough guy. It is. And they've got to be more than minus 70 to this point here today. Absolutely. Even though they're leading 17-7 in his first season as offensive coordinator, admitted he might have a bit of the jitters. And it'll be interesting to see what he calls here on third and 11, up by 10 as we hit the later stages of the third quarter. On your third and 11 now, just inside the 20. Here's Lewis, runs around the pressure, gets around the end, and won't get away from the second white jersey. Lenny Walls is the guy able to make the sack. It looked like he got fooled when he jumped up, but instead, he comes down and is able to catch him by the shirt tail. And once again, this is a little bit of inexperience on the part of Lewis. At this point, when the thing breaks down, just throw it out of bounds. He's in a vicinity to where he could have intentionally grounded the pass. Just throw the thing out of bounds, set up a now you're looking at about a 46-yard field goal attempt. Much more difficult. Loss of 11 on that play. Ollinger will attempt now the 46-yard field goal. Snap and the spot were good, and the field goal is up, and it is no good. And so with 322 to play, here in the third, the score remains 17-7. Gives us an opportunity for our storyline today, which is brought to you by the U.S. Army. And then you see B.C. struggling early in a number of categories, in the turnovers and rushing yards, and easy to see why West Virginia has a 10-point lead. Well, and again, I think if they use wisdom here, West Virginia in particular, hope that Coburn on this hot and humid day doesn't get tired because they've been riding his back this entire quarter. Here's Boston College now taking over. 
After the missed field goal on first and ten, play action, Hasselbeck throwing, has a wide open target and hits him. It's Robert Ellis, the big tight end, pickup of 11. And as you pointed out, he does something that's popular amongst the athletes today. Pumps his chest and points towards the sky, but he has more reason than most. You had documented the story earlier that he they had anticipated that he's going to be the starting tight end, tight end heading into spring, but he left the team for personal reasons. Obviously, he's worked his way back to get some playing time, and that first down catch has to feel awfully good. Ruffled some feathers with his teammates. You know, might have thought he quit on the team, but they have accepted him and taken him back. And there's Willie Green was slammed pretty hard. You know, we have not seen a lot of hard, direct hits, one-on-one -on -one collisions in this football game. Well, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that you've got some pretty good runners. I think it's interesting on the other side of the ball that you would say that, because I think that's one of the reasons why Coburn is so durable. On the other hand, Willie Green is somebody who just lost 15 pounds. He's around 230, went down to 215, so he'd be a little bit quicker. But I think that was one of those collisions you just made reference to. That was, that's why I brought it up. <laughs> that was maybe the second one I can count today. On second down and six, Green. Nice move. What a move to stay in bounds. He cut it inside. He's carrying Mountaineers on his back to the 21 yard line. Willie Green. Well, Willie Green certainly justified something that we asked Tom O'Brien about. I said, well, you know what? You got this 1,100-yard rusher. What's the deal with that? How come you got to get the other guy in the lineup? He says, trust me, we need to get him the football. He's showing why. Shows the spin there. Cuts the outside. Now, this move is really cool with a stiff arm. Now he swats him to the other direction to stay in the field of play. Nice job. It was fun to watch. Pickup of 35 yards by Green. And they give it to Cedric Washington that time, spelling green, giving him a breather. A couple of years ago for Tom O'Brien's first win, they had the star runner, Omari Walker, who went down with a bit of an injury, and they brought in this kid, Cloud, who suddenly rushes for a ton of yards, and they get a victory. I don't know if this is another Wally Pipps situation or not, but certainly you have to like the way green is running. In 1998, Mike Cloud became BC's all-time leading rusher. Second round pick of the Chiefs, and as you pointed out, doing rather nicely in the NFL. Second down and seven now for Boston College. Down by ten, looking to make it closer. Here's Hasselbeck with time, puts it up in the air. The BC receiver looking for a flag. It was Keith Hemmings, the intended receiver, as Hasselbeck was dumped down. Well, on the other side, Richard Bryant is looking for a flag because he thought he got pushed. I think it was a good non-call on the part of the officials. Corey McIntyre is the player who banged Hasselbeck to the turf. Hasselbeck did get whacked. And you know what? Again, Steve, you have to mention this very young secondary for the Mountaineers has held up very well here for three quarters. Third down and eight. Hasselbeck from the shotgun throws across the middle, and there clearly was contact before the ball ever got there. That looked rather obvious. Richard Bryan and Dedrick DeWalt just bumped together One thing, the two-yard line. One thing that I do like about this, though, the college game, is it's going to be a yardage penalty instead of a spot. Here, Bryant closes in, bumps him off the ball. Of course, you could argue the point, Steve, as the ball was quite high as to whether or not it was catchable. But on a collision like that, once the ball is right in that direction, the official has to throw the flag. Minute 27 to play here in the third as they continue to try and sort things out, and here we go. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards, keeping the spot, first and goal. Now watch the ball. In your opinion, is this a catchable ball? That's always the big argument. Could DeWalt have had that? Well, in that case, it looks like he at least certainly could have got a hand out of it. He deserved a shot at it. So good call by the official. Gives Boston College a first and goal now from the five-yard line. Two tight ends. DeWalt split out to the right. Out of the eye. They're passing. Hasselbeck off the play action. Touchdown, Boston College. And that's a great call. A great call by Dana Bible. Been running the ball with Green. They've got him on their heels. The crowd is booing. The Mountaineers a little discombobulated. Don't just run it in there for a two-yard gain. Instead, they go with a play action on first down when people don't expect it coming up with the catch. That's a great, great call on the part of Dana Bible, offensive coordinator 
for Boston College. And, and a Rob real welcome back for Robert there Ellis. Go. There you go. Man, that's got to be exciting. Mike Sutfin is on to attempt the extra point. Trying to make this a three-point football game. And Sutfin boots it through. West Virginia had a 17 to nothing lead. Boston College gets a late touchdown in the first half. They pick up another score here in the third. And Boston College very much alive here on opening day for Morgantown. Welcome back. Three-point football game. That 17-0 lead West Virginia had has all but disappeared with a minute 22 to play in the third. Following the Robert Ellis touchdown catch. 17-14 West Virginia. Mike Sutphin off the tee will kick it away. Sean Terry for West Virginia. Deep in his end zone will take a knee and the Mountaineers will start first and 10 from their own 20. Back to the studio. Here's Brian Kenny. Steve, let's get back to Penn State. And Akron, Rashard Casey with a very rough day. Of course, dealing with the offseason arrest and not dealing well with the Akron defense here. Scrambling, looking, nothing yet. Of course, very good on his feet. Could not get it going against Toledo here. Matt Seneca, redshirt sophomore, is now in at quarterback for Joe Paterno. Toledo leading Penn State 24-6. Ten minutes to go. All right, Brian, thanks. Heard earlier, Lee Corsa saying he wouldn't be shocked by an effort like that. We'll see what Toledo's doing today. We'll keep it posted there. It's Avon Coburn trying to carry out ahead, pick up of three yards on the play. You're watching college football get into the pro game. NFL Countdown is back tomorrow morning. Started off with the best pregame show in the business at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Chris and the gang now welcome Steve Young to the fold. One of your good buddies, Todd. That's Sunday, 11 a.m., 8 Pacific. The best in the business get even better on NFL Countdown. Final minute to play now as Coburn is exactly 100 yards, plus now. 107 yards now. Hey, all right. On his 24th carry of the afternoon before Doug Bassett brought him down for BC. Well, it goes without saying that if indeed there is a comparison between the two, now, you had pointed out early on that there was only 12 yards separating them last year as the number one and number two rushers in the Big East. Clearly, Coburn is getting the best of it today as you see the numbers. Washington just can't seem to get started as the front seven of West Virginia has been fairly dominant. Although, as I say that, let's not forget that William Green came in and tore off some big chunks of yardage to get BC right back in this game. After the first down, it's Sean Terry up to the right side. Antonio Brown, I beg your pardon, out to the right side. And it looks like they're close to another for, yeah, he's got another first down. 12 yards on the play. Antonio Brown showing that speed. That's one thing you just can't teach. Still 418. That sounds like cat speed to me. That's just, that's just so bizarre. Frank Spaziani having his hands full with the White House for West Virginia. And of course, Avon Coburn, as you pointed out, already over the century mark. And, and with the White House running the football, Brown now three carries for 33 yards. What is that? The rush. Something like your 11 on 11. Beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. We're talking about this. You're a man. Oh, we're meshing. Only week one. It's hard Woo. to believe. Like it was just yesterday we were on the Fiesta Bowl on ESPN Radio. Hand off again to Coburn. Not much there that time. And that should be the final play of quarter number three. That'll do it. We'll come back. Should be a throwing fourth quarter from Morgantown. West Virginia leads BC 17-14. A big part of Boston College's success last season. They went 5-2 and two in games decided by 10 points or less. And it's the old cliche, good teams win the close games. And here we are in a three-point football game on a second and 12 upcoming as we open up quarter number four. The end of the summer. Hope you're enjoying your holiday weekend. Let's be smart out there, folks. On second and 12, off the play action. Here's Lewis rolling around, trying to escape four white jerseys. And he is forced out of bounds, and there'll be a loss on the play. Once again, Steve, there's a situation where he just needs to throw the ball away. Just throw the ball away. You're outside of the tackles. That's something that he's going to have to learn. I'm sure that Bill Legg will teach him. Finally, no more negative yardage in terms of Boston College. Give William Green a lot of credit for that big number there. The 55 that you see there, which is 
not not huge stats by any stretch, but there it is. And that's been helpful to Boston College, and it seems strange the feel of this game. West Virginia seemingly dominated the game, right. up in yards and everything else, time of possession. But you look up at the scoreboard, and there's only a difference of three. And not to be fooled, if you're just joining us, those three BC turnovers all came rather early. They've been pretty good since then, getting back in the football game. Here's Lewis, all sorts of time, and took too much of it. Scott Bradley got him from behind, and I guess that was one of those coverage-type sacks. He had plenty of time to throw the football. He certainly did. Bradley does a great job, though, of being persistent. Here he is on the outside. You can see him come up the field. Actually, it's a pretty good job of blocking him, holding him out, as you pointed out, Steve, on the part of Matt Wilson. But finally, it just breaks down, and you can't sit back there for five or six seconds. Bradley had five sacks last season, second on the club, only to the great Chris Hovind. And the punt to Dedrick DeWalt bounces on him. Won't have an opportunity to make a big play. And West Virginia will down it at the 15-yard line, and that's where BC will start deep in their own territory. Well, the last drive, the key play certainly in getting Boston College. Their touchdown was the part of William Green. Cuts inside, spins to the outside. Sherrod comes over, he stiff arms him, then does a great job of tight roping the sidelines. Great feet on the part of Green, and that really gave the Eagles a lift. As they are the get down field, and of course, Hasselbeck puts the nice pass on the hands of Ellis to get them in the end zone. Green, surprisingly, on the sidelines here with an average of seven yards per carry. See, I think as well as he was doing, he'd be in here because Washington, frankly, hasn't done anything. But after the 50 yard punt by Fazolari, who's been one of the stars for West Virginia, BC takes over. Here's Hasselbeck scrambling away from trouble. And his pass is nearly caught. Good coverage on the play. Ryan Reed, the intended receiver. And once again, it was King who was able to break it up. That's a very catchable ball, and it's a great job by Hasselbeck scrambling around, buying time. But he just couldn't hang on to it. Reed had a pretty good kid in high school throwing him footballs. A guy by the name of Drew Brees at Westlake High School in Austin, Texas. Hey, he's all right. <laughs> They're going to have a pretty good college career. How did he ever get out of Texas? <laughs> That's amazing. It is. Minute in the quarter number four. Out of the shotgun on second and ten. Here's Hasselbeck steps up into the pocket now, feeling the pressure. Nice little touch pass is completed. The first down of the tight end, Mike Guazzo, and I know you love that, Todd. And so too does Dave Ryan. Dave? <laughs> well, guys, it's a big game for Robert Ellis, the BC tight end. Now, before spring ball, Ellis left the team, went home to Baytown, Texas, for personal reasons. Came back to campus, watched the spring game from the stands, asked Coach Tom O'Brien, can I come back to the team? The coach went right to the seniors and Tim Hasselbeck said, it's your decision. Tim Hasselbeck said Robert Ellis didn't make a lot of friends when he left, but he worked hard from fourth string up to second string tight end. He's made some big plays in this game today, a key part of the BC attack. This keeps up for BC. He'll likely be pretty popular back at the Heights after that touchdown catch earlier. And there, the quarterback Hasselbeck throwing it away, and the crowd wanting a flag for intentional grounding. David Upchurch had the pressure. Crowd not understanding the rule that one seat's outside, and that close to the sidelines, outside of the tackles, he can do exactly that. Now, strangely enough, Steve, he pointed out the fact that on the other side of the ball, Lewis evidently is not cognizant of the rule because he's cost them some yardage negatively. The last play prior to the punt that put him in all that trouble. He lost two trying to escape trouble. I'll tell you what, the pass protection for Boston College has been outstanding. That was a good seven, eight seconds he was scrambling around back there. Three seniors on that BC offensive line that could have futures playing on Sunday. Here's Hasselbeck now throws the floater up in the air, and there comes the flag. It's going to be offensive, Steve. It's going to be offensive interference on the part of DeWalt. And once again, that 11-on-11 situation goes to Brian King. Very impressed by the crowd here. They throw the flag. The normal thought is, oh, it's got to be against the defense. They knew right away it was offensive pass interference. Well, I think DeWall did, too. He, he saw the balls over his head, and it looked like King had a sure interception, so he gets in his way. And it's interesting, Steve. I, I like that call for a lot of reasons, and one of them in particular is because pass defensive backs... Against the offense. 15 yards in the previous spot remains second down. Cornerbacks in particular have arguably the most difficult task on the field. I mean, you, you know, you just bump a guy, it seems like you're going to get a flag. 
And so I'm sure that King has justified the fact that he was in the position to make the interception and get that to go the other direction. It's amazing, as a former offensive player, you're so kind to defensive backs. Well, I, I, like, I like to think that I've matured with my years, Steve. A lot of years <laughs> there. Ouch. And a second and 25, you saw the comparison. Here's Hasselbeck putting it up. Picked off, clean pick by West Virginia. He's Sean gone. Hackett, touchdown, Mountaineers. Pick clean, was it a white shirt in the area? And Hackett runs it into the end zone. 40 yards on the return for the touchdown for West Virginia. Steve, one of the reasons why they're getting such great pass protection is because they've only had two people in the routes. And the result of that, as you're here holding against the offense, which will certainly be refused. This is, this is either, in fairness to Hasselbeck, it's easy to say maybe it was a poor throw, but I think that he was anticipating a corner route on the part of his receiver, and he just wasn't in the vicinity. Because it certainly wasn't pressure. John Oliger is on to attempt the extra point. And that has gotten the crowd right back in this football game. They nearly saw their Mountaineers blow a 17-0 lead. But the interception return for the touchdown. And the extra point is good. Sean Hackett, a 41-yard interception return for a touchdown. And West Virginia has that 10-point lead back. West Virginia under Don Nealon now 16-3 and 1 in home openers and looking to add that they get the big play by Sean Hackett, the junior from Trenton, New Jersey, on the 41-yard touchdown of the interception return. And West Virginia's got their 10-point lead back. Have you ever noticed too when they make a big play? I, I, I don't know if that just entertains the heck out of me. They come to the sidelines and he's on the headset. Hopefully he's being congratulated. Todd James kicks it away. Jonathan Ordway deep in the end zone takes an E. And BC will open up first and 10 for the 20. Sometimes you got a situation here where you're going to have the two receivers come down. He's going to throw the ball here into the corner. And it's a timing route. But unfortunately, the receivers are not where they're supposed to be. A closer look gives you the opportunity to see that there, Dedrick, DeWalt, and Hemmings collide. Hemmings is supposed to be out into the corner. But any way you look at it, in the case of Hasselbeck, that's a poor throw there. Just way too many blue shirts. Hackett able to come up with a gift and go the distance for six. We were praising West Virginia, how good their inexperienced secondary had been playing. Then the game gets close and tightens up, and you thought, hey, maybe some nerves would come into play. And then they respond with a pick for a touchdown. Here's Willie Green, who's been the best running back for Boston College this afternoon. He's out close to a first down. David Carter made the tackle. See, that's a very good point. And when you consider the fact that up to this point, here we are 12 4 48 in the clock running in the fourth quarter and BC has only thrown for 129 passing yards and you've got an experienced quarterback like Hasselbeck you have to give kudos to that young secondary of the Mountaineers. Field position will be looked at should BC lose this one they started only once beyond their own 30. That's incredible a defense puts a stick there on green led by Corey McIntyre. Edmonds number 42 in on it as well and Edmonds has shown that he is a very multifaceted linebacker remember he had an interception he rushes he forces the fumble I mean he is a terrific he is he is what they made reference to at Corey Moore of Virginia Tech he's a disruptor he's somebody that offensive coordinators in the Big East are going to have to be very aware of as the schedule proceeds Richard Bryan is out on the field for West Virginia urging the crowd to pick it up let's get into it here West Virginia has been in the top two in attendance in the nine years of the Big East, starting in 91. That play is batted away. And they were expecting upwards of 60,000 here this afternoon. Dewan Daniels was the intended receiver. That was a play earlier that they were able to get for a first down, but West Virginia was waiting on it. It, it appeared to me that the left guard moved. I thought the play was going to be dead, but it was not. The result is fourth, and they're going to have to punt. Everything's going the Mountaineers' way. Antonio Brown is steep at the 25. Kevin McMiler will punt it away. Low snap goes down to get it and boots it. And here's Brown. No. 
Another fair catch there from Antonio Brown. He's done that a number of times today when it would appear there was running room for him, electing to go with the fair catch. Well, Sunday Night Football is back for you here on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. It'll be the Tennessee Titans against the Buffalo Bills. Todd, have you seen this play before? You mean the one where he throws on the 19, the guy catches it on the 21? Yeah, I've seen it. The Music City Miracle, although it's not referred to that in Buffalo. It's the third season of NFL football on ESPN, a rematch of that great and controversial 99 AFC playoff game. Cooper Rigo is the ball carrier for West Virginia, and there's a flag on the play. Boston College jumped offside, so they'll able to be able to get those five yards. <laughs> Let's go to the field and Dave Ryan. Dave? Well, Steve, the WVU sideline alive and well, following the big play from Sean Hackett, the pick, and then the return for a touchdown. Really put a big charge into the crowd, as Todd mentioned, and into the bench down here. It's the second time in this game defense has made big All plays five. to create some momentum for the Mountaineers in the first half. It was all Chris Edwards, Sean Hackett in the second half. You know, we talk about a bounce-back season by West Virginia, but specifically the defense. I said it before, Nealon said that was the worst defense in 20 years he had last season. So they're really trying to... I think they felt like they were pushed around on the field, not just the BC game last year, but throughout the season. It had more than their feelings hurt. And they've toughened up here, at least in the opener, to this point. Now trying to get it going on offense while keeping that clock moving. It's Rigo again. And Jonathan Ordway brought him down. Well, I think the point that Steve Dunlap made in, in supporting your point, Steve, was the physicality was missing. They weren't knocking people around. Instead, as you pointed out, getting knocked around. And that's not supposed to happen to a West Virginia defense. At least it hadn't happened until last year. You can see their rushing defense over the last four years. Not a good thing there. They go from a, a tremendous second in 1996, as we pointed out, nearly 200 yards a game in 99. But today, they've only given up 80 yards rushing. And they have yet to turn it over, and here's Rigo bursting up the middle. Cooper Rigo having himself a ball game. Willie Poole finally brought him down after the gain of 38 right up the gut. This is a nice call by Bill Legg, and the reason I say that, not just because of the yardage, but because, remember, this is the play that they had used earlier to Antonio Brown, handing him the ball coming around. This time, everybody's waiting on Brown. Watch Brown sprint by. Everybody thinks he's going to get the ball. They're waiting on him. The people in the interior are unaware of the pass that Rigo was long past. Great call and good misdirection on the part of the offensive front for West Virginia. There's Bill Legg. Off to a pretty good start as an offensive coordinator, you'd have to say. First time since 1989, he hasn't been on the field. He's going upstairs. And they keep it on the ground, Rigo, and why not? Halfway to another first down. What's happening with Ole Miss and Tulane? We find out from Brian Kenny. Steve, Conference USA with its shot in the spotlight today, taking on the SEC in four games here. It's 21-17 Ole Miss, Tulane driving, trying to get it back. Oh, no, Pat Ramsey to Kerwin Cook, batted up in the air. Kenny Woods would bring it all the way back in for a touchdown. So Ole Miss breaking this one up on top. And they have the lead right now. It's 35-17, and it's over. Penn State is 0-2. Toledo beats the Nittany Lions. All right, Brian, thank you for it. Both updates now as Antonio Brown carries the football and he's knocked out of bounds, they'll say, at the 10-yard line. The clock is stopped with 9.33 to play here in the fourth. West Virginia up 10 and looking for more. Now, beginning of the season, if you'd have told me that Toledo was going to beat Penn State, what would you have said? <laughs> You haven't been all that good at predicting things today. No, no, so no, I, I haven't. I, I, that's just, that's astonishing. Right. I think the SC thing may have been predictable because SC has a lot of people coming back. And that's a very good football team. But losing to Toledo, a lot of people in State College aren't very happy. And now the game was in State College. That's right. Wow. Third and two. That game is seen over on ESPN2. Hand off to Rigo. Not much there. But it keeps the clock moving. Great penetration on the part of Andy Romanowski, even though the tackle ended up being made by Mizzarelli. Romanowski forces the ball, and now they're going to have to attempt another field goal. Second, 
surprising to think that West Virginia is successful as they were inside the 20. The 22. They'd be four and seven. Just goes to show their lies. Well, <laughs> 32 yard field goal attempt is up and on the way and it is good. John Ollinger boots it through his second field goal of the game. 27-14 West Virginia up here in the fourth. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Gigo.com. We've got this car thing down and by Gateway. Call 1-800-GATEWAY. Back in Morgantown, Boston College actually arrived in the area late last night, about 10.30 last night. That is late. They had an emergency landing in Pittsburgh, the charter flight for BC. They didn't realize it was an emergency landing until they actually landed. The plane evidently was leaking some hydraulic fluid, and there were fire trucks and ambulances all around. They're playing that. It's enough to scare some folks, even when you are on the ground. So it's been one bad thing after another for Boston College here in the Big East opener. Down 13 now with 8.52 to play here in fourth quarter action. Todd James will kick it away. And it's Willie Green from his goal line. He's made some things happen. He won't make anything happen there as he goes one-on-one -on -one with James <laughs> Davis. You the man. You are the man. <laughs> Some of the hitting is starting to pick up now here in the floor. <laughs> I always love that 40 yards away. Yeah, that's right. I got something for you. <laughs> well, that, that's the freshman kicker, true freshman kicker, and they were really concerned about him. They said, look, we have no idea what he's going to do with nerves and everything, but he's been just fine. And here's B.C. Hasselbeck will dump it off to the right side of Cedric Washington. Nothing doing there. He's surrounded by four blue shirts led by Sean Hackett, who had that 41-yard touchdown off the interception return earlier. Well, now the front seven for West Virginia can pretty much pin their ears back and come forward. Not an enviable position for Hasselbeck to be in now, trying to bring him back from two touchdowns down. On second down and 12 after the loss by two, here's Cedric Washington grinding it out for maybe three or four on the play. McIntyre in the middle making the stop for West Virginia. I'm really surprised at the struggles for Boston College in particular. And I say this, Steve, I realize that they have to travel, and as you just pointed out, had a very discomforting landing with the airplane. But because they're primarily a running team and they had so many veteran people back on offense, I really thought that they were going to get something going today, and it just has not happened. I agree. And that West Virginia inexperienced secondary has to feel pretty good about themselves. Third and eight. We'll see how they feel after this play. Here's Hasselbeck out of the shotgun now. All sorts of time. Dumps it across the middle. And it's oh. picked off. Picked off Grant Wiley. Touchdown, West Virginia. The redshirt freshman, Grant Wiley. Went off Washington's hands. He couldn't handle it. Wiley corralled it. And for the second time this afternoon, Hasselbeck is picked off, and it's run back for six. Well, in fairness to Hasselbeck, obviously that's not his fault. Washington makes the catch, makes the move, and he's going to have the first down. He's not able to focus on the ball. And Wiley, as we pointed out at the top, Steve, the redshirt freshman who was replacing arguably their best defensive player last year in Barrett Green, Comes up with a very exciting touchdown on national TV. Here's Oliger to boot it through for the extra point. It's good. And it's all West Virginia. They've opened up a 20-point lead. Welcome back. Morgantown is just jumping with West Virginia out in front by 20. BC's turned it over five times. West Virginia not once. And who were those guys, I don't know, some three hours ago talking about the inexperienced secondary for the Mountaineers? Well, again, the big play here, as you can see, Wiley, a redshirt freshman. But in fairness, again, in fairness to Hasselbeck, who has three interceptions, that certainly wasn't his fault. Very catchable ball by Cedric Washington. We also pointed out at the top that in the last 20 openers for West Virginia, they've averaged 34 points. Wow. Bingo. Eerie. They've hit it again. That'll keep that average right around there then. 
Yes, <laughs> yes, it would. And we could see the quarterback, St. Pierre. He normally just plays a series in the second quarter. But maybe when you get down by 20 in the fourth, you throw that theory out. Off the kickoff. Daniels from his goal line. Looking to make something happen. For Boston College. And they'll start now on first and ten, getting late in the football game. And the home opener was really important for West Virginia, not just because it's the rare in-conference home opener to start, but because they've got seven home games this season. A lot of marquee teams will come in, a lot of really tough teams. And as you pointed out last year, they had their four wins, all of those wins at home. This is a very difficult place to play. They have a definite home field advantage here. And in a couple of weeks, I know that Miami is coming here, and I thought that was just going to be a lock for Miami, but after watching them today, I like their chances, especially on this field. Notre Dame will come a call in a little bit as well. And this was looked at as well, one of the tough home games. West Virginia played all the tough teams on the road, according to their coaching staff, last season. Now they get some payback getting them all at their place this season as William Green carries. And there is a look at what well, you'd have to consider really a, a challenging home schedule. Cer certainly. But, of course, just as challenging is if you have to go on the road against some of these teams. Of course, they do have a road game against Virginia Tech, which won't be a lot of fun. But still, seven home games really beneficial. Now, how angry will Don Nealon be after winning the home opener in a conference game about the scheduling? Probably not. Now it's a now it's a great thing to have when you win the football game. You're already up in conference play. Yeah, that's a very good point. We talked about that yesterday, the fact that everybody was fussing about it, but I knew right then that 24 hours later, yeah. whoever won, great, great decision. Six and a half to play here in the fourth. It'll bring up a third down and six. Well, there are a lot of things that Don Nealon has a reason to be happy about, but two things in particular. One happens to be the fact that this guy, his kicking game seems to be in a lot better order than he thought it was going to be. And, of course, he's got to be thrilled with the way his defense played, particularly the secondary. How about the swings in this one? West Virginia had a 17-0 lead, then it was 17-14. 17 more unanswered points by the Mountaineers. Hasselbeck trying to throw for the first down. Incomplete. Keith Hemmings was his intended receiver. I beg your pardon, Brian St. Pierre, the quarterback in for Boston College. Fourth and six, and BC will punt it away. Kevin McMyler standing at his own 10. Antonio Brown at the 30, set to receive it. Spiraling punt, and see if he calls for the fair catch. And he does again. The 36-yard line after the 40-yard punt. There is a flag on the play. After the kick, we have a dead ball, late hit, receiving team, 15 yards, it will be first and 10. Well, one of the exciting things about special teams for West Virginia today has been the play of Quentin Swain, their kick covered person. We'll get a chance to look at it after this play, some of the coverage that he's had, the excitement that he's enjoyed in his first collegiate game. Hey, and we'll watch for late hits again. Last year, when this game got out of hand, there were a couple of late hits. Some so late they weren't even called. And as this game opens up with a 20-point bulge right now, we'll watch for that again. Check out number 51. We talked about special teams and how significant they are in college football. Downfield, is he close? Nah, he just jumps over the pile. Not that time. That was his first play as a collegiate then. Skips the ball a little bit, but a flag goes down and it doesn't count. Finally, in this situation, the last kickoff, he is in on the tackle on Dewan Daniels. The Miami, Florida native. Had a fairly productive day, I'd say. First and ten now for West Virginia. They figure to keep it on the ground here. 
It's Avon Coburn on the carry for two yards as the clock churns down to 545 and counting. I'm surprised that he's in the game. I know that they, they had they switch back and forth with Rigo and himself, but obviously Coburn is the stone star of the Mountaineers. You would think that he'd be out of the game now. Game well in hand. He's their star player. But uh, <coughs> oh I'm sorry, I just heard something. Evidently his mother made, made makes the point that he has to have a certain amount of carries. And so that's why he's back. I wonder if 27 is <laughs> the number. 27 carries for 119 yards for Colbert. So we'll add to that. That's carry number 28 on the afternoon. Well, I got to get you. You know what? I have to give his mother credit. She's been animated from the first to the last. You know, sometimes it can be fair weather on the big runs, big deal. But instead, yeah. every single time, you can see she's. Ex oh, yeah. Now she's shy. <laughs> Where's her sports center is next sign? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, that's only if you're trying to get on TV. She doesn't need any help in that department. No. She has reason to be proud. Here's your third down and six. Lewis from the shotgun. The pass for the first down. Wide open man. There's a seam in the middle of Corey Ivy. And he's got the first down. And flags come late after the 16 yard gain. Brad Lewis to Corey Ivy. This could start getting a little nasty. Again, I, I think this goes back to last year's game in Chestnut Hill. Yeah, I think it does. I think there is something to be said for that. But by the same token, that is that is a year removed. And from year to year at the collegiate ranks, it's completely different people. And so this will come back. Nice catch. In the, it was a nice catch on the part of Ivy. Showing good hands, reaching back for the ball. We wait for the official call. It's one of the few times today that Don... Nealon has had to complain about anything. Again, as we count down the final few minutes here, keep in mind NFL countdown comes your way tomorrow. Chris Berman and the gang and the best in the business get even better. They'll welcome Steve Young to the studio at the Worldwide Leader. Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific. Five yards in the previous spot. The only way to start your Sunday morning right here on ESPN with NFL Counting. Late hit on the office. That 15-yard penalty is tagged on to the receiving spot remains third down. Yeah, here come the personal fouls, and that's no good for anyone. Again, we mentioned there was some trash newspapers this week. Corey McIntyre of West Virginia was quoted as saying, hey, we want to make them crawl out of here. And now with the outcome really not in doubt, up 20 with five minutes to play. I guess this is not uh, unexpected. And there is Corey. The third and 26 upcoming. Getting ready to put the chin strap up tight. Get back out on the field. Pitch to the right side of Coburn. Across the 20, the 25. He's well short of the first down, but it'll give him some more room to work with. And Here's Dave Ryan. Dave. All right, Steve. Todd Christensen said a moment ago, Lottie Benton, Avon Coburn's mom, the most enthusiastic mother out there. Are you yelling the loudest for your son? Yes, I am. Very loud. I love my son. He had kind of an unusual upbringing with really three different families, his grandmother, yourself, and the, the Mebs who uh, became his guardians. How difficult was that for him to grow up and still play football? For Avon, it was real easy because he worked real hard to do what he wanted to do. This was his future. This is what he wanted. And I, I made sure that he got it. That's why he went with the Mets. And they are lovely people. I love them because without them, my son wouldn't be here. And I'm so happy about that. See ya. It's great to see him. I love my son. Steve and Ty, we know she'll enjoy the rest of this one. Yeah. Back to you. All right, thanks very much to Walt on the return there. And so Boston College will get the football back after the 56-yard punt. And there's the matchup. We talked about the two big backs separated by only 12 yards a season ago. One, two in the Big East in rushing. And Avon's been calling today. It's been his day, no doubt about 134 yards against a pretty decent Boston College defense. And for whatever reason, it just wasn't Washington's day. Not only the 
poor day rushing, but again, that bobbled reception that turned into a touchdown going the other direction. Coburn came into this season as the fifth leading returning rusher in the nation. LaDainian Tomlinson of TCU came in number one. Here's BC now. We'll see what they have to try to get back in this football game or make it more respectable. St. Pierre's intended pass. Well out of the reach of Kenny Gaskins, the junior wide receiver. Well, that, that's indicative of how poorly things have gone for Boston College today. Misdirection, everybody is fooled. The man's wide open by eight yards, and he can't get him the ball. Boston College certainly this week is going to have to go back to the drawing board. They play at Army next, then have a week off, take on Navy at Chestnut Hill at Alumni, and then host Virginia Tech. Better be ready by then. Handling it out to the right side. It's Derek Knight on the carry, trying to cut it around the end. Picks up 13 on the play for the first down. Steve, both Boston College and West Virginia with their reserves and now giving them an opportunity to play. We talked earlier about the opportunity that St. Pierre had with the one series in the second period. I think this is a good chance for him, too, to get a feel of the game. Right. Just any more, it's difficult for a single quarterback to make an entire season without getting nicked up somehow. And BC will keep it on the ground. They'll try the left side this time. Nothing doing. It's night again. The redshirt freshman out of Westwood, Massachusetts, Kyle Caden, made the stop. There's more great college football action for you coming up tonight over on ESPN2. See the Battle of Colorado at 6 Eastern. Always fun when those two schools get together. Then here on ESPN, a couple of ranked clubs. Southern Miss visits Tennessee, and then Arizona, Utah at 9 Eastern. ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network. Go.com. A triple header of more great college football coming up for you tonight on ESPN and ESPN2. Tried night on the draw. Grant Wiley there. Wiley having himself quite a fine football game. Had the pick for the score. A couple of run stops. Good in the coverage as well. On the other side of the line, however, Tim Hasselbeck has not had a particularly good day. Three interceptions, and he comes to the sideline still making the calls, still being involved. Pretty good pedigree there with his father, who played professionally, and, of course, his older brother now. The backup to Brett Favre and Green Bay. Third down and 12 now for Brian St. Pierre, the sophomore. And the flag flies. Clock, the play clock had expired. The delay a game, understandable with the inexperience in the BC offense. Dead ball, delay of game, offense, five yards, still third down. As we approach 3.30 Eastern time, you think they would have delayed this game enough? <laughs> Coming up, just as soon as we finish up here in Morgantown, the NASCAR Duralube 200, part of the Bush series, of course. That's coming up next right here on ESPN. After the penalty, third and 17. Hand off tonight to the right side, and James Davis made the stop. I was thinking the Knight came into the game, Steve, thinking to himself, all right, I'm going to get my stats, get a couple of yards instead. A lot of the second teamers for West Virginia are playing just as hard as the first. And those fans that I've remained here, and crowd about 50,000, on their feet cheering on what was really thought to be a weak link, the defense for West Virginia. They've played very strong game today. Here's Antonio Brown. Did he fair catch that one as well? Yes, he I did. I believe he did. Okay, West Virginia up 20. Final two minutes here. Antonio Brown in West Virginia with every reason to smile this afternoon. They're going to be 1-0 on the season, 1-0 in the Big East as well. He and Edron James go to the same dentist, I guess. <laughs> it's working for Edron James. Yeah, I'll say. New quarterback in the game for West Virginia. It's Scott McBrien, the redshirt freshman from Rockville, Maryland. And West Virginia will keep it on the ground. 
We're seeing everybody. They're emptying the benches here. Terrence Johnson on the carry there. Scott McBrien, the left-hander, was actually in the spring. They talked about the fact that he might actually be competing for the job, but in the summer, the word from Coach Nealon was is that Lewis had separated himself from McBrien and established himself as a starter. A reminder for those of you just tuning in for NASCAR, it is coming up, the Duralube 200 from the Bush Series. That is on the way. Just as soon as the final 90 seconds or so tick off the brand new scoreboard here at Mountaineer Field. I mean, they were putting on the finishing touches late yesterday afternoon. I think they're still working on the video part of it, but the left side of the scoreboard apparently works just fine. You mean, you mean our own cameras weren't on there? Did I miss that? No. Oh. Well, Don Neely, we thought he was concerned that his players might be watching the highlights up on the board. That's one concern he didn't have to worry about today. <laughs> might have to worry about it for the next home game. Six more games here in Morgantown. He's always had bounce back seasons. His previous 20, he's only had four losing seasons. The previous three times he's come back with a winning season each time, two of the three with bowl victories. And you know, you look at those numbers there, Steve, and you say to yourself, who had the nerve to, to fly an airplane over this stadium last year and say, Nealon's gotta go? I mean, the guy has been tremendous for West Virginia football. Keep it on the ground, keep the clock moving. Nealon joked with us as well. He said, listen, I get all my speaking engagements done prior to the season. <laughs> because you never know how the season's gonna go, but right now, I'd say he's in line for a rather lucrative speaking engagement, at least for another week, right? Yeah, there you go. They'll be 1-0 after this one, and 1-0 in the conference. We cannot stress that enough. For Boston College, and they have to be somewhat concerned. If this is the final score, they will have lost their last three ball games, if you date back to last season, by a combined 78 points. The season finale, the bowl game, and here the opening. BC was trying to use those last two games last season as motivation to show just how good you have to be. And it obviously has not helped today. And the final 20 seconds will tick off. The final score here in Morgantown. 34-14, West Virginia is victorious. For Todd Christensen and Dave Ryan, this is Steve Levy. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, tune in to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. Now stay tuned for NASCAR and the Bush Series Duralube 200. West Virginia well on their way to bouncing back. Good afternoon.